Oh, Mr. Kringle is soon gonna jingle the bells that'll tingle all your troubles away. Everybody's waiting for the man with a bag, cause Christmas is coming again. He's got a sleigh full, it's not gonna stay full. He's got stuff to drop at every stop of the way. Everybody's waiting for the man with a bag. Cause Christmas is here again. He'll be here. To the answers, to the prayers that you've made through the year. You'll get yours. Till you've done, wait, till you've done everything. Should. Extra special good he'll make this December The one you'll remember The best and the merriest you ever did have Everybody's waiting They're all congregating Waiting for the man with a bag Better watch out now Merry fucking Christmas Merry Christmas. It is my favorite time of the year, other than Halloween, of course. And I am so happy you are here with me. Let's have fun tonight. I have no calls after, okay? So we're gonna have a fucking amazing night. I'm going to start with, I, first of all, I see that there's, you know, super chats already. I'm gonna answer them. Please be patient. I am gonna start, I wanna, I wanna show the Christmas shit, and the gifts that I've been sent first, okay? My hair's bugging me. I'll be right back. <laughs> we'll start with poops first. So we'll give her something to do. And keep in mind, this gift is from um, a fellow HBIC Summer, who was very, very good to us. Spoils the shit out of us. Very much so. And it's from Summer, and she wrote her name, and the Chi Chi's, which is her dog's. Um, this also came with an advent calendar. So this one I cheated and opened this early, because I knew the advent calendar was in there, because she had told me. And I wanted to make sure Poop got started on her advent calendar for Christmas, okay? So that was in here, okay? There was an advent calendar. So the rest of the stuff is Summer, she, she's something else. She sent poop. I want to see if I can get poop's reaction. Poop's, yeah, poop is ready for her. Well, let me get these thingies off first because Summer will yell at me if I leave them on. Hold on, poop. I know, I know you want your toy. She's very excited about this. gonna destroy that in like three seconds okay but she also sent poop another one no poop finish that one first shit no poop's taking that one first again okay i'm not gonna squeeze this one because we don't want poop to take it yet and multiple treats and like i said don't forget Summer, summer sparkles, yes. Summer did send the advent calendar that's over on the other side of the kitchen. We've already started that. Are you loving your toys? I wish you could see her in a moment. She's serious business. She's got serious business. Oh, she doesn't know what to do with herself. Oh, they, oh, here. She's very happy. Summer knows exactly what to send. Ooh! Estee Lauder. Youth Keepers. Thank you, Summer. Damn! Oh, wait, I don't want those to drop. Wait, wait, we're losing, we're losing height here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Mac, mm -hmm. yes please. Oh my 
my Jesus. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Damn, Summer! You always give fucking amazing shit. You all can hear poop in the background. Oh, God. This is glow. Wait, I, I need glasses in a moment. Glow motions. Translucent, transfer resistant shimmer. Fuck yes, carnival queens. Glow oil. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Damn, summer. Summer is literally the best gift giver ever. Oh my Jesus. Summer. This is fucking beautiful. Get my, wait, get, oil your ass up for your ASP. Isn't it magical? I love it. <gasps> Summer. Look at this sexy shit. Damn. Thank you so fucking much. This is gorgeous. I don't even know what to say. Thank you so much. I mean, all the other stuff is nice too, but I'm like, damn. Hold on. Oh my God. It's, hold on. Oh my God. It's two of them. One for each fucking hour. Holy shit. Summer. Fucking shit. Huh? Double purr is right. Sorry, I'm being a uh, fucking sassy, sexy bitch right now with my sexy new fucking bracelets. Summer! Thank you so fucking much. These are gorgeous. Fuck my life. My lord, I don't know what to say. Put these up. Poop is celebrating over there. She looks so cute. She's so excited right now. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, Summer, thank you. God damn. God damn. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Okay, and this is from our girl. She's Meow Meow on here. Meow, what is it? Meow Meow the first, Meow Meow the original, also known as Cat, uh, from Australia. So, I'm so excited. Oh, my Jesus. First of all, how pretty. Look at these pretty fucking towels, kitchen towels. Look at those. Sexy, sassy, saucy. So fucking gorgeous. Thank you so much. This is like a dream box because it's like Australia in a fucking box. I, hold on a minute. <gasps> Look at this shit. If you all knew how much I love just, just the phrase, which is brew. If you only knew, look at that badass bitch. Oh, that'll be a Halloween decoration. Thank you very much. Fuck yes. Oh, it's so exciting. This is the best fucking Christmas ever. But wait till you see all, like, I'm just gonna... Wait a minute, what's this? Detoxifying soup can detoxifying biodegradable sheet mask. Thank you very much. But look at she sent me Australian goodies. It's like I went to my own Australian sweet fucking shop. And this is exactly, I'm not gonna lie. She didn't know this, but in the past I've considered, because you know on Amazon they sell like different countries. I don't know, like candy boxes so you can get sweets from like England, Australia, and all over the place. And I 
have always wanted to order them. She basically sent me one of those and she didn't even know it. Look at this shit. Fucking Vegemite. Yes. Oh my Lord. Carmelo Koala little chocolate bars. There's like four of them in here. No, five, six. Jesus Christ, cat. Oh my, wait, hold on. No, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. We've got Nestle Kit Kats with the Australian version. What the fuck are you talking about? And, oh my God. Holy balls. All this fucking. Okay, the brand Sukin. Clearly it's Australian, right? But. Okay, paw paw ointment. This is fucking amazing. Hydrating, replenishing, hair mask. Revitalizing facial scrub. Thank you very much. Fuck yes. And rehydrating gel cream. Oh my God. Literally it's Australia in a box. I am obsessed with my witch's brew cup. I'm not going to lie to you, though. You have outdone yourself. My God. And I cannot wait to dive into those. Thank you very much. Hold on. We're not done. Let's see. Who's next? One moment. Okay, again from, um, and I always, I always say her name wrong. It's Nicola, it's not Nicola. I call it Nicola, but it's, it's Nicola who sent me the sexy ass candles, remember? Well, look what else she sent me for Christmas. Sexy, sassy, saucy, HBIC. How perfect is that? Sexy, sassy, saucy, HBIC mug. Thank you so much, Nicola. Still want to call you Nicola, though. How fucking amazing. Now, I'm not going to lie. I received a plethora, a plethora of cards. I am not going to read them all online because some had personal messages in them. But to all of you who sent me cards, thank you so much. One moment. Oh my gosh, hold on. I almost forgot another thing here. Hold on. Coming. I wanted to have these pre cut. What do I do with my razors? Hold on. Damn it. What do I do with the razor blade? Well, we're going to resort to scissors because I don't know where the fuck it is. This is from. Corey. So Corey, thank you so much. I know it's from her because she sent me stuff from this brand before and she warned me she was sending me things. Spoiling the shit right out of me. So it's from that brand doTERRA. So this is spa body scrub. Exfoliating body scrub. Thank you very much. Jesus. Also spa doTERRA. Refreshing body wash. God damn it. I want to smell this one. Do we all hear the sounds of poop destroying things? I love you, Corey G. Thank you so friggin' much. Oh my God, it smells fucking amazing. And we all know I'm a picky bitch when it comes to smells. This smells fucking fabulous. And do you all know what I use the exfoliating um, scrubs for? My feet. And my ass. Just so you know. Anyway. Also... Okay, from also Spa Terra Hand and Body Lotion. It's got one of the thingies on it again, but I gotta smell it. I do, listen, I want a soft baby's ass, so I exfoliate my ass. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. This feels fucking amazing. Very 
very good consistency, but not too greasy. Also, Spa Terra Hydrating Body Mist. You know what? Oh, too much wrapping on it. I want to smell it. Can't help myself. Easy poop. It's like a citrus fucking heaven. These are for you, girl. Get out of here. I love you, but get out of here. Citrus Bliss Hand Lotion. Also, doTERRA, spa doTERRA. And, goddamn. Lip balms. But the lighting in here sucks tits and I can't fucking see, so hold on. Hold on, I gotta get in the light and look. Herbal Tropical. God damn, I can't read that one. Oh, original. Duh. Original Tropical and Herbal. Lip fucking bombs. You guys know I'm playing lip bombs all the fucking time. Jesus, Corey. Thank you so fucking much. You guys have fucking spoiled me. It's the best Christmas of my life. For multiple reasons. One moment. And hold on. And lastly. Ugh, because I'm going to sit down. Okay, lastly, this is bugging me. Looks like fucking Mickey Mouse ears. Lastly, this is from... Tara, Tara, I won't say your last name just in case. And she sent a lovely card, which I will not read. I'll keep it. Oh, I appreciate you all. You guys are all fucking amazing. How fucking sweet is this? Blessed and grateful Kim Poop and family 2022. BF, oh my God. Oh, this is BFF. Oh, GHBIC. BFF! Look at you being fucking crafty! Look at that! Oh my god! Look at you being a talented crafty bitch! How fucking sweet is that? Thank you so freaking much! Girl, you're talented. You are talented. That is so pretty. I love that you put the BFF on there. OG HBIC. I love that. Thank you so friggin' much. This has just been fabulous. Now, I know a few of you have also sent things to me that are, are not here yet. But I went to the P.O. Box yesterday. So I will go again. And when, when they come in, I will absolutely open them on a live stream. It does not matter that it's after Christmas. It does not matter, okay? It's a thought that fucking counts. All right, I'm going to put this down. And then we're going to jump right into this shit. This poop is so destroying, that toy. All right. First of all, I just have to say, honestly... Thank you so fucking much as I'm re readjusting here. Thank you so fucking much for the fucking gifts. Honestly, I just appreciate literally every single one of you. I know I say it all the time, but I really mean it. I take nothing for granted. I don't take any of this for granted. I love and appreciate every single one of you. You guys, along with manifestation, of course, has completely changed my life. I've said this before as well. That you don't even know how many times it was you guys getting me through really shitty moments. Um, yeah. I, I can't say it enough. And thank you. Feels like such a, a lame 
a lame phrase. It's not enough to convey my love and appreciation for literally every single one of you. You guys make me happy. You're my family. And to be honest, <laughs> hope my family's not watching, but I'm not going to lie. 99.99% of the time I'm thinking about you guys. I'm thinking about you guys first. I love you, mom, dad, brothers, sister. But I can't help it. I feel a very extremely strong connection to you guys. And I'm not going to get emotional. I don't feel like fucking crying, okay? I don't want to. I can feel them working their way up, so we're going to not do that. I love you all. I appreciate you all very, very much. And what whatever anyone is manifesting... Don't let anything steal your joy. It's you giving yourself the joy and allowing yourself to be happy. Even when our 3D isn't perfect, it's allowing yourself to be happy now that brings all the good stuff to you. I've learned that the hard way. You don't have to. And listen, twin, oh my God. Finally caught alive. Miss you. Guess who's spending Christmas with their SP? Thank you. Love you. I love you too, my twin. And I'm so glad you're here. I love you all. I really, really do. And I want to read every goddamn message here. I, yeah. No matter what, it's still time for 2022 to end with a very happy bang. But irregardless... Irregardless, just like, listen, we said it last year. Let's mean it this year. 2023 belongs to the HBICs. It rhymes. It has to, it has to mean something. 2023 is the year of the HBIC. Come on. We can do this. We set it for 2022. There's still time left. Let's end it with a fucking bang. We can it's just a change. It's just a change of our thinking. It really, really is. Yeah, I'm running 2023. All HBICs are running 2023. It has to. It rhymes. It belongs to us. Poop agrees. Holy shit to the super chat. My God. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Oh Lord! All right, I can, I I peeked in here earlier, so I know some of you sent them early. And they're listen. You know there's gonna be sound effects. Poop's got a present, so Poop's gonna be making sound effects. Okay. Um. So let me go over to this other screen first. She's fucking burning. Oh my God! Hold on. I missed a lot of them. Okay. Is this Lalia or Layla? Layla? Laylilia? Nee? Thank you very much. After five years, SP got secretly engaged in July. Told me he wasn't sure with us. He always said this. Things got better and he started conforming. But yesterday he told me he won't quit on the engagement. This seems so big and scary. Listen, I don't blame you. That does sound very big and scary. Okay, I get it. So, right? What do we always say? Our feelings are always valid. You're not wrong for how you feel. However, Poop, Poop would like me to tell you, to listen, don't validate those circumstances. Don't validate circumstances in the 3D by you, by you, accepting it is truth. I'm, listen, okay, it's fucking Christmas. My dog's gonna be loud. Okay? It's Christmas. Um, You guys are used to my fucking dog, so. Right, quote? Oh, you're ready for another one? Okay, all right, hold on. What did I do? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, this might distract her. One moment, please. Why don't you take it easy on this one so you can enjoy it a little longer? Go ahead. But then that's it. That's your last one to kill. Okay. All right. So let's not validate 
the circumstances. And what I mean by that is you already had, I'm sure, a response to it. You probably had an emotional response, and that is fucking normal because you're a human, right? Anybody would have had some kind of a response to that, right? We're still having a human experience. But we don't have to give more meaning or more permanence to that scenario, to that circumstance. We don't. And if it, listen, if that's been something that he's been saying to you all along, you know, he was, he was never, what was the words he used? He wasn't sure with us. He wasn't sure. Oh, you weren't sure? Okay, twat. Um, and he, I'm not going to quit the engagement. Yeah, okay. We'll see about that. Okay. We'll see about that. First of all, you know what's happening in the 3D, right? When our SPs are showing up and reflecting, they're reflecting us. They're reflecting us. So clearly there was probably some level of an inner belief or assumption, same thing, of feeling either not good enough and not good enough is probably, probably it. Just because I'm thinking that because of this, his phrases, the way he's wording things. Or, yeah, I mean it. We'll see about that. Okay. But, no, really. Either feeling not good enough or not chosen. Like, you're not going to be the girl chosen. And that would, you know, make sense as to why a 3P shows up in the equation. I want you to literally just think for one second. Every time... That he said to you, he, oh, I'm not sure about us. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh. Every single time he said it, I'm sure your insides had a reaction like, oh, oh God, he's not going to pick me. He's not going to pick me. He's not sure about us. He's probably going to leave me. All the fears that we all as humans have, right? But think of it like this. Every time he said it and every time you had that response, it was a validation. It was you sticking with a reality that you don't want to be in. And don't beat yourself up for that, right? Because we don't have to be perfect. That's not what I'm trying to say to you. I'm saying you've got the power right now to decide, no, that's not the reality I'm in. You, you are sure about us. You are in love with me. We, we are having this love relationship, it's going to happen, right? You love me, I love you, it's going to happen, it's going to be okay. And you just start telling yourself that. And by doing that, you're selecting the reality that you really want to be in. And by doing so, you are also becoming the version of yourself that you want to be, that you deserve to be. The version of you that is confident, that the person that you're in love with loves you back because you're a high value fucking woman and you deserve love. You deserve to be happy, right? So when SP shows up saying, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about us. I don't, I don't know. I'm not ending the engagement. I'm not breaking it off. You're sure the fuck you are. Yeah, you are. But you don't gotta say that to his face. You just say it in your head. Oh, oh, you're getting rid of the engagement. Oh, you're, you're finally breaking it off. Oh, you're head over heels in love with me. I knew it. You're so head over heels in love with me, you can't live without me? Of course. Of course. And you just keep talking to yourself like that. I'm telling you, it changes you. It helps you shift. You have more power with that beautiful little mind of yours, then you're aware. I know the 3D can be scary. Even I still have my moments where I react, respond, cry to things in my 3D because I'm still a human being. And I don't cut myself off from emotions. And when I'm in love with someone, and if they say anything to me that sounds like they're not head over heels in love with me, of course I have a response. That's why I said to you, don't fucking beat yourself up because you probably had a response. Don't beat yourself up for it. I do it too. It would have made me cry too. I still have my moments of getting teared up, getting a little emotional, right? When you have your heart out there and you're wanting someone 
to love you the same way you love them, you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable, which in itself can be difficult. But that's, a, that's all what this journey is. It's learning to come from a place of unconditional love so we can have that unconditional love reflected back to us. But there's nothing wrong with adding a little sassy, saucy, sexy fucking HBIC shit added to that. There's no reason why we can't add a little sexy, sassy, saucy and still have unconditional love. There's no reason. I do it every day. Every single day. And I'm telling you, when you start deciding who the fuck you are, what you deserve, what you want to experience, how you want to feel when you wake up in the morning, how you want your life to look like, what, what dreams and goals are you commanding and demanding appear in your reality? You begin to change and the world around you begins to change with it. Don't you panic. Don't you panic over that SP. I'm not going to bring all things in me. I'm not sure about us. Fucking revise it. Revise. Revise the moment you first heard about the engagement. Revise the first time he said that he wasn't sure about us. Mm. Revise it. Revise on the spot when you're talking to him. When he's talking to you and he's saying things to you that you don't want to hear, revise on the spot. You don't have to absorb every single thing that shows up in your 3D as your permanent truth. You don't have to. You're running your own reality. When we fall prey or fall victim to what's happening to us in the 3D, you're having a human moment. It's not a manifestation failure. It's you being human for a moment. That's all. But when your human moment is over... You get back on your HBIC train and start telling yourself who you are. I know it's scary to have an SP show up and say some shitty shit like that twat did to you. But guess what? You got the power right now in this moment to change it right now. Right now as we're sitting here. Choose the reality you want to be in. Choose it. Decide you're having what you want, period. Okay? It's going to be okay. I will not comply. Thank you very much. SP has health issues. Feel bad affirming me as priority. Okay, so your SP has health issues and you're feeling guilty that you've been affirming. I'm assuming this is what you mean. You feel kind of bad that you've been affirming to be the priority while they have health issues. I think that's what you're saying to me. And if that's that's the case, let me just say this. Don't start feeling guilty. Don't start feeling bad, okay? You can still choose to, listen, you wanting to be the priority to someone that you love and want a love relationship with doesn't mean that you're putting their health as the back burner. Because you have the power to start seeing them as thriving, as feeling amazing, as feeling healthy. You have the power to do that right now and you can be doing both. There is a state that exists right now in this moment where you are the priority to your person and they are their most healthiest version. It's in existence right now as we're speaking. Right now. And you have the power to choose it, because let me just say this. You're feeling guilty about wanting to be the priority while they're not feeling well. You're feeling guilty because you have a fucking heart. You have a good heart, a caring heart, and that's why you're feeling that way. But I'm telling you, you don't have to feel guilty. It's not about being selfish. It's about choosing a different timeline or a different reality, a different version of them. That's it. Nothing to feel guilty over. Nothing for you to be beating yourself over. You know, don't do that. Choose a different timeline. Choose the timeline where they are thriving, feeling amazing. They are at their most healthiest. Don't beat yourself up for that. Please don't. And, and listen, the, I can't say it enough. The fact that you feel guilty shows you're not a selfish piece of shit. You're not. You have a good heart. 
So choose to see them healthy. Choose to be in that reality. Okay. The Heaven Watsy Show. Thank oh my Lord Heaven. Thank you so much. Thank you so that was really nice. Overly generous. Thank you so much. Hey sugar. I've been embodying the girlfriend state. I now feel it to my core. Currently on solo. Not stressed about it. I don't care. My issue is how will manifest cause this time? I'm not manipulating my 3D anymore. Also, what does it mean to have good dreams about SP? I fucking love you, heaven. Okay. All right. So I'm not stressed about it. I don't care. My issue is how will it manifest? Because this time I'm not manipulating my 3D anymore. Okay. Well, first of all, you know, heaven, purr, I do love you. But don't worry about how it's going to manifest. This is the best possible thing ever that you're not manipulating your 3D. This is wonderful. Now you're allowing your fucking subconscious or your I amness or the God within or your universe or the fucking moonbeams. You're allowing that manifestation to come to you naturally. The logical, literal bridge of incidents way, which doesn't mean it has to take a long time because that's not what the bridge of fucking incidents means. But this is wonderful. Okay? And I bet it does feel weird. Boop! No. Sorry. The rest of the kitchen is in mid-baking um, cookies for Christmas. And there's a bowl of unwrapped Hershey Kisses over there. Because I'm making the peanut butter one. I don't know what the proper name is. The peanut butter ones where you put the kisses in it. And she was heading that way. Um, no poop. We're all done. You, you, you already killed all your presents. I'm sorry. All done. Oh, she looks so sad. Were your presence a success? All right, back to back to heaven. So listen, this is this is the achievement. No, get down, man. Here, we should have this. Okay, now go lay down. Be a good girl. There's literally cookies and stuff everywhere. Um. Listen, when Poop is like, nope, I know. Sassy, sexy, sassy, saucy. All right, so to be perfectly real, everyone should get to the place where they are no longer feeling it's necessary to manipulate the 3D. You wouldn't believe how quickly things could come to you if you would just let go of the 3D. So the fact that you're doing that right now, Heaven, is good, it's amazing, it's a fucking achievement. It's a shift of state. So you don't need to worry about the how. I'm sure your logical mind wants to entertain the idea of, I wonder how it's gonna come to me. You know, when we're having innocent thoughts like that, that's one thing, that's one thing. Oh, I thought, Jesus Christ, I thought she was joking. But when we're concerned, like stressed over the how, we don't want to do that. And when that happens, we know we have fallen out of the state, which we just want to walk our way back, right? So my issue is how it will manifest because this time I'm not manipulating my 3D anymore. I'm so glad you're not manipulating. Manipulating your 3D when manifesting, and there's a lot of people out there, I only know because of my comments, no. I only know that th there, there are some people that, you know, because we make the rules of manifestation, that, that some people have the mindset, well, then I want, it, I want to manipulate. I want to put my hands in the 3D. I want to. Oh, okay. And then they use that as the nugget of why they should be able to. Well, you said we make the rules of, of our reality. You do. You do, but keep manipulating and fucking with that 3D. Fuck around and find out. I love it. I sit back and watch. Okay. Keep fucking with your 3D. Go right ahead. Mr. and Mrs., you're going to make the rules. Go right ahead. Fuck around and find out what manipulating in that 3D does for you. It does nothing but cause endless drama 
and it does not bring the manifestation. It just doesn't because you're still in a lack filled state. So make all the fucking rules you want. Make all the rules. But when you feel it necessary to manipulate the 3D and fuck with it and mess with the middle and worry about micromanaging, you're always going to be the one standing at the end of the line crying that the manifestation ain't here yet. Because you're automatically, without a shadow of a doubt, you are in a lack state, a state of you not having, which is why you feel the drive to fuck with the 3D. Period. Do you know what I'm saying? What does manipulate the 3D mean? It can mean a various things, various forced actions. I'll, I'll give an example. When I used to like to manipulate and force my 3D. I, I was fucking famous for it, okay? When I didn't get my good morning message, okay? Not only did I let it ruin my entire day, I would do what? Just fucking text. Text and text. So I would get my 3D validation. And I'd still let it bug me all fucking day long. Or if I was feeling like, hmm, I wonder if SP really loves me. I don't feel loved today. I feel needy and desperate. Let's call him. Let's get some, you know, movement. Let's, let's see if I can bug him so he'll say what I need to hear. Hello, manipulation. Or how about when people are pretending that they're not fucking with the 3D, but go out of their way to make daily fucking posts on their Instagram or their Facebook, checking to see if SP looked at it or liked it. All these forced actions, that's manipulation. That's not manifesting. Because when you feel that you have to do this shit, when you're, when you're deliberately putting a post up and then double checking to see if SB checked it, th then it's, did they like it? And how quickly did they open it? When we're doing all that shit, you are automatically, with, without question, and it's got nothing to do with whether you like states or whether you understand states or it, it's got nothing to do with me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's, it's not my opinion. I'm just calling it what it is and telling you the truth. When you do that shit, when you feel that you need to do that shit and you're hanging on to that fucking 3D like that, you are one million gazillion quadrillion percent in the state of not having your manifestation. And if you stay there and keep doing these ridiculous behaviors, it's not going to change. You're going to keep more of it. If anything, you're going to get plenty of hot and cold behavior. Hot and cold. Hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. Because you're on your manifestation game for a day and a half. SP fart sideways, you fall right back off. We're triggered. We're losing our shit. Hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. And all we had to do was say, fuck the 3D. Fuck it. If you've already done the work as far as, okay, do I have patterns? Am I getting the same shit over and over and over again from SP? Am I, am I constantly in a place where a, th a third party is involved? Am I constantly manifesting relationships with people that don't want long-term future with you? Or, you know, if I'm constantly having this, do I see the pattern? Let me address it. Once I've addressed it, and by addressing it, I just mean, okay, I can see where I have not felt good enough in my relationships. Okay, not feeling good enough. That's not who I'm going to be anymore. That's not the state I'm going to stay in anymore. I'm going to focus on me feeling good enough. Me knowing that's who I am. I'm going to start identifying as the woman who feels good enough in relationships. Now it's fuck the 3D. You've identified the limiting belief and now we're done with 3D. I know you got to live and exist in your 3D, but you don't have to accept it as your truth. So when SP or anything else you're manifesting is not showing up perfectly the way you like in this moment, it's fuck it. Fuck it entirely. You don't let the 3D tell you who you are. You decide who you are. That's manifesting. That's true manifesting. 
That's not the baby bullshit manifesting fucking videos. Get, get a text in fucking 24 hours. Bullshit. It's none of that. Real manifestation where you actually get results and keep it is simply deciding who the fuck you are. Period. Period. So heaven, I'm fucking proud of you. And I'm glad you're leaving the 3D alone. Because this is where you're going to finally start getting hot, 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 hot behavior from SP. Hey, ma'am. You know better. What's the matter? I got to give her water. Hold on a minute. So what does it mean to have good dreams about SP? Listen, dreams, there's a part of me, okay? You're all going to think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Buffs. But if you would ask me that question, let's say, I don't know, six, seven months ago, I would have said to you, you know, dreams mean whatever you want them to mean. You decide what dreams mean. You give it the meaning. Um, you know, it's also, especially when you're having the good dreams, it's, you know, your subconscious, it's processing, blah. but I'm not going to lie to you. Over the last few months, my opinion on dreams has changed. Now, I, I still think that there is a something in with, you know, it's your subconscious processing. It could be processing with something that happened during the day. It could be processing, you know, like if you're like listening to night tapes, you know, you're on an, a manifestation game, you could be processing things like that. I still, I still think that that's a possibility but there's a part of me that thinks we actually are accessing other existing realities when we're dreaming because when we are dreaming we are shut off from this current reality that we wake up to every single day when we wake up think about it when you first wake up that first one or two seconds you're not in awareness yet you're not even you might know who you are but your circumstances aren't there initially Maybe the third or fourth second in of being awake. Then everything starts coming back to us. But I just have, you know, there is just something within me that thinks that it is a possibility that it's we are hitting other realities when we are asleep from here. Do I know that for a fact? No. Do I know people who have had very odd experiences? Yeah, which is what has started the ball rolling of me feeling strange, uh, meaning changing my opinion. So I don't know. I'm open to dreams. I do not believe that dreams predict. I don't because I don't. I don't believe in that. I I believe that we are only ever manifesting. It's it's us doing. You know, it's not. Oh, I had this dream, so now it has to show up in my 3D. Only if you want it to. See what I'm saying? But I'm open to the possibility because it's like this. I heard Tom Kiernan say not too long ago. And when he said it, I'm like, oh my God, why does that feel something? I feel something with it. And I, plus I just, I respect his teachings because I, I, I just like him. But, you know, he said once that, you know, when we are having desires, you know, you can also look at it from a different perspective where, you know, most of us were taught that when you have a desire, it's coming from the God within, the I am, which that can still be a thing. I'm not saying that that's not true. But he he said, and I, for, and I think it came from, oh, of course, in this moment, I can't think of the book. Fuck my life. The book will come to me. The book is all centered on like time tracks and timelines, okay? 
but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was the video and he was saying, you know, look at it from a different perspective. When you're having desires, you know, we already do accept that, you know, you're, all right, let's say you're manifesting an SP. It's done. It's yours. It's already in existence in another reality. But I have, a, all right, I'm going to warn you. I think a pee break's coming. So just, just warning. Um, I'm, I'm coming, boob. That when we have desires, that it's because that desire is coming from your intermingling with the other reality. And that's why you have the desire, because of its inexistence. I don't know what book that was from. Something Zealand is the author name. Something Zealand. Vadim Zealand, maybe. Don't quote me on that. Fuck. Off the Thank you. Yes. Naveen Zealand. Yes. Pretty sure it came from that book. But I don't want to speak for Tom. I know this is listen, y'all know me and my half ass memory when it comes to shit. Unless it's right in front of me. Um, reality trance surfing. And I liked that. I like having a different perspective. Because, you know, for me, I'm talking to a general audience. So not everyone is going to accept like this one way of things. So I like having different options. Well, if you can't accept this, maybe you can accept this. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and I liked that. I liked that idea of that we're, you know, we're intermingling. Why wouldn't we intermingle and cross into other realities? If that's what manifestation is, why wouldn't we naturally be doing it when we go to sleep? Why wouldn't that happen? Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why my opinion on dreams has, has changed. And you guys all know I'm someone, I keep the box open. I do not close the box. I don't. I stay open. I am open-minded to anything when it comes to manifestation because I love this. I love this world. And, and, and if someone can offer me something that makes me feel judged when I hear it, like her squeaking that toy, um, I love it. I love the idea of it. What's that? I'm not a... Wait, all right. Oh, you're not talking to me. Okay. Um, so... What does it mean to have good dreams about SP? I suggest you just tell yourself it means good things. Maybe you hopped into the reality where you and SP were doing fucking fabulous and you're in the midst of manifesting that reality now. See what I'm saying? So it can mean whatever you want it to mean. There's something very judging to me to think that the possibility of hopping into another reality, though, I love that thought. I love the perspective of quantum jumping. It is so fucking exciting. If, if quantum jumping doesn't make you feel like a limitless, powerful fucking biatch, what more is there? You don't like this fucking reality? Fine. I'm quantum jumping to the next one, bitches. See ya. I'm out of here. I love that. Never settle. Never accept less than what you want. You can just quantum fucking jump. You know what I'm saying? It's so amazing. Don't, I know you guys are probably so sick of me ranting on don't accept limiting fucking beliefs from other people. Don't do it. Keep the box open. Don't close your, when I'm talking about the box, I'm talking about your brain. Keep it open. Don't automatically shut shit down because a scientist doesn't say, yep, that's okay. It's okay. That, that's true. You guys, I, most of us have been around long enough to see where science changes their fucking minds on a bunch of shit. I know I'm old enough to have seen where science changes their fucking mind. Okay, my favorite example is motherfucking Pluto, okay? Once was a planet, then it's not a planet. Maybe it's a planet again. Really? So science is always facts. It's always facts, always true. They can't make up their fucking mind. Why are we just believing them as that's the only way to do it? Because a scientist said so. I don't hate science. I don't hate the medical community. I don't hate psychologists. I don't hate... 
I'm just, why are you believing what another human being is saying as gold, as God, as truth? You have so much more power in your mind. You can have whatever you want. Don't let anybody out here ever tell you differently. You're accepting their limiting beliefs as your truth. Why are you doing that to yourself? Don't do it. Don't. Please. I, I, it probably gets annoying, or at least I'm sensitive that it might be annoying that I bring it up all the time. But my God, my God, when I let that go, when I stopped thinking that I ha you, I gotta fix my self concept. I have to fix my self concept. I uh, the, the next self concept course. I have to I have to fix it. When I said I don't fucking like this. I don't I don't fucking like how this makes me feel. I don't fucking like the idea that I'm not good enough. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. It makes me feel a certain type of way, and I go with how I feel, truthfully. And when I dropped the notion of there's something to fix, there's something more to heal, there's something more wrong, and decided, no, no, I'm going to be this person. This is the version of myself that I want to be. I'm going to be her. I don't got to be perfect. There's going to be a moment where I don't feel like her, but I'm going to work my way back to feeling like her because I'm never going to be the version of myself ever again where I had to look at life and be fucking miserable, miserable and knowing and thinking at the time that there's something wrong with me. I got all these fucking shitty beliefs that keep showing up. I'm never going to be able to get rid of them. They feel, it feels like, like 10,000 pounds on top of me all the fucking time. It felt terrible. It was fucking miserable. So I'm telling you from my own personal experience, and nothing more than that. Just my experience, my own life experience. When I stopped listening to people tell me, you got to fix your self-concept. Oh, you need some self-concept work, sister. When I stopped and said, fuck you, fuck all of that, fuck it entirely. I'm perfect the way I am. I can just choose to be the version of me that doesn't have any fucking limiting beliefs. And I'm going to start living the life I fucking want. My life started fucking changing and very, very rapidly to what I wanted. Is that coincidence? I don't fucking think so because I don't think there is coincidences. I really don't. So listen to me. Yes, you might have a moment where you wake up feeling like old self. So fucking what? Have your moment and then decide you're that new version. And don't give up on it. Don't give up on yourself. Because everything is wrapped around you. Everything is. Everything is contingent on how you feel and what you think about yourself. So you are the number one. The number one. There is nothing you can't have. And I learned that the long, hard way. Because I listened to bullshit for a long time. For a long time. Because you got to remember, when I found all this shit, there weren't Law of Assumption channels. They started popping up shortly after. But they weren't there. It was just Law of Attraction channels. So you don't have to take the long way. You don't. Fuck this mentality that you got to work on yourself. That you got to fix yourself. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit. Okay? All right. I hope I do not butcher your name. Does it Taruna? Taruna Kenogia. That's like a pretty name, though. Thank you very much. My SP recently got married. I am in a lot of pain. Should I give up? Because I tried but could not get into the state. I can't stop crying. It hurts to see him with the 3P. Help me. What should I do? Oh, girl, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Listen. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I, I'm the person, I hate saying I'm the coach, I'm the coach, I'm 
the YouTuber that will never tell anyone to give up on anything. I, I'm never going to tell you to give up on something. It's just, I don't believe in that. There's nothing wrong with deciding you don't want to manifest a specific person anymore. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But I won't ever tell someone to give up. I'm going to use, this is one of my most favorite examples. I'm going to use Shelly Bullard for a minute. You know, Shelly Bullard had an SP and she got to a place where she didn't want to manifest him anymore. She was sick of it. She didn't feel like fixing the stories. She wanted to just a clean slate and start new. And guess what? She did. And guess what? That's her fucking husband. So there's never... Okay. Taruna, I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come right back. I'm going to pick up on this, all right? We're going to fix this. I'm going to take poop out for a pee-pee. Okay? It's fast. She pees fast. We'll pick right up. Okay? It'll, it'll, it'll be the same energy when I come back. I promise. Listen, this does not have to mean you won't get your specific person if you don't want to give up on them, okay? So I'll be right back. All right, come on. Come on, let's go pee pee. Come on. Okay. Okay. So picking up with Taruna. Okay. So I, I brought up the, the Shelly Bullard scenario. So if, if you are getting yourself into a place where you think you want to not manifest SP anymore, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay. But if in your heart of hearts is you want to manifest your person, and I, and I know looking at the fact that they just got married, I'm sure is fucking heartbreaking. And I'm sure we're looking at it as pretty permanent, right? Marriage feels, seems very, very permanent, but it's not. There is nothing permanent in that 3D. Nothing, unless we decide it is, unless we want it to be. So if in your heart of hearts, you still want that person, it's just a matter of you starting with putting the focus on you, how you want to feel, how you want to be treated in love, how you want the relationship to look, meaning your state. 
It's working on that and realizing there are no obstacles. Even someone freshly getting married is not an obstacle. And I'm going to tell you right now, I personally know someone that was in a similar scenario where their SP legitimately went and got married. And guess what happened? She put the focus on her state and she is now 100% with that person. A scenario popped up, a circumstance, a bridge of incidents popped up that led to that marriage ending and she's now with that person. So it doesn't have to be over for you if you don't want it to be. It Listen, stuff like this happens every day. Listen, and I'm also not trying to take a shit on marriages, but let's be honest. What's the divorce rate? I don't know what it, Let's see, what country are you in? You're in? I think you're in Canada. I don't know what the divorce rate is in Canada, but it's pretty fucking shitty in the U.S. Not that we should be proud of that, but marriages don't necessarily last. And... <clears throat> I always preface this because there's always someone that shows up and maybe because now I think it, I'm manifesting it, but there's always a judgy bitch who shows up and has a problem with someone wanting to manifest someone who is married. And, you know, I've said this a million times, but I'm going to say it anyway because I feel protective of HBICs. You don't get to judge somebody else for what they want, fucking want to manifest. And it's none of your goddamn business. Okay. Just want to say that. It's none of your business. It's not your concern. Okay. But. Listen, go for it. You don't have to give up if you don't want to. If you put the focus on who you are, who you are being, what state you're in, you make that the focus. And by what state, I mean, what would it feel like if you were living your exact dream life? What would it feel like if you had your specific person? He was no longer married. He was head over heels in love with you. He was completely and utterly devoted to you and your relationship, maybe marrying you if that's your wish. What would it feel like if you were living that right now? And I don't mean you got to fake it. I just want you to think about it in your imagination. What would it feel like? What would it feel like? It'd probably feel fucking amazing. It would probably feel like on top of the world because I know what unconditional love from a specific person feels like it feels like it, you are in I don't even like a bubble and that you don't want it to be popped it feels incredible it's incredible it's happy it's peace it's safe it's secure okay and allow yourself to feel it feel it even just for a few seconds and you work on that every single day. Every single day you ask yourself, what would it feel like to be that version of myself now? What would it feel like for me to believe that it would be easy for me to get into that state? What would it feel like to think that I could fully trust manifestation and that this is really going to work for me? What would it feel like? And entertain that every single day. And you're going to start changing because your state's going to start shifting. And therefore, your 3D is going to start changing. It's undeniable that if you make your state of consciousness, the who you think you are, your identity, you make that your priority, this has to catch up to it. It has to. There's no such thing is maintaining a state of consciousness and then your 3D not reflecting it. And I'll tell you, we have a tendency to demonize our 3D. But the truth is, the 3D is just waiting for us to give it fucking instructions. Kim, sometimes it just feels overwhelming and unattainable. I understand that, okay? I understand that, but it's not. It's not unattainable. It's not. This is going to lead into something I was going to make a video on, but, you know, I know we all have manifestations that we want so deeply, just like Taruna here. We all want our specific people, okay? The hardest part is to keep going, but you can do it absolutely. We all want our manifestations. I know that. But... 
we all, I was guilty of it too. We all get to a place where we are making our manifestation the God of our reality. We don't want to do that. I'm not, I'm not even talking the pedestal shit, right? Because you know me. I think the pedestal, pedestal shit is fucking stupid. The only thing with the pedestal that I'm in, in agreement with is that you, you should never be 10 miles, you know, under your specific person from the pedestal, right? But it's natural to put someone you're interested in on a little bit of a pedestal. It's, it's, we do it. It's just natural. But when we are looking at the manifestation, so whether it be money, health, a specific person, when we're looking at that, is that that is our God. Like, I can't be happy until that happens for me. You're taking all, I mean, every ounce of your power and putting it in the manifestation. We don't, that's not what we want to do. And that's 90% of why we get hot and cold behavior. When you decide your state of consciousness should be your priority. And I know, I know you guys probably get sick of me talking about states. I can't help it. It's just, it, this is what works. Or at least it works for me. I've seen the most success with. When you, when you decide, fuck this, I'm having that. <laughs> I'm having that. And this is who I am. This is the version of myself. This is who I am now. Everything you want will show up in that 3D. And I know it's pretty ballsy of me to just, yep, that's what will happen. You're going to get your manifestation. But it's true. When you make who you are number one. Yes, Danielle Land. Yes. When you make that your number one. Who you want to be. How you want to feel every day. What you want that life to look like? How does it feel? How do you think it might feel if you had that life right now? You make that your daily fucking focus and not the manifestation. I don't mean that you can never focus on your manifestation. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I'm saying that should be your number two. Your number one should be who you are, who you think you are. Because that's what brings the manifestation that's what gives it to you. I've noticed when I've been consistent in the state, I get movement. It works, y'all. Yes, Danielle. I'm telling you guys, it's true. It's true. When, when you, I'm, I, can't, I just can't say it enough. When you make the focus of who you are, which is what state you're in, you make that number one over the specific person Specific person's going to show up acting motherfucking right. Specific person's going to show up being all over your ass. Head over heels in love with your ass. That's manifesting. Deciding who you are. Choosing to be the version you want to be. No. Hey. No. Poop. You know better. No, you know better. Good thing you're cute. All right. So where was I going with it? I fucking forgot. Okay. So listen, you don't have to cry anymore, Karuna. You don't have to cry because this isn't a done deal. This doesn't mean you have to give up on anything. It's just circumstance. I know it's a hurtful one. I know it's a painful one. I know I would have cried too. But it doesn't have to mean it's the end of the road for you. Make you your number one. Who do you want to be? Hey! Look at this shit. Pope! What are you doing? Stop being a turd. Okay? Now go lay down. Be a nice girl. You trashed my whole living room. You think about that. I don't think that was very Christmassy. Okay, you are welcome. You're going to be fine. I'm telling you. Do what I said. Make your state the priority, who you are being. 
you watch the little bridge of incidents it starts playing out. I'm telling you, I like I said, I know someone personally, personally, that has successfully done this. Okay? You can do it. Morgan Eckstein, thank you very much. Kim, I'm panicking. I feel like I'm dissociated and not in a state at all. I have been doing amazing this past week, feeling like I'm his dream girl on and off. And today I can't feel anything help. Okay, don't panic. Do not panic. Okay, I know that feeling. It sucks. Don't panic. So, yeah, feel like I'm disassociated. I really would like some details from you as to why you, that's a pretty specific word to use. Why do you feel that way? And not in a state at all. Well, you're in a state. We're always in a state. It's just maybe not the state of your most favorable choice right now. Okay? But you're in a state. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. There are times where I've looked at just manifestation in general. And it's not like I'm like, oh, be disassociative. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. But I can see how a manifestation game in itself can make you feel like you're disassociating with things. So I just want to say that. Like, I've experienced that, too. And I guess in a fucked up way, I, I can I can see why you may feel that way. Like, it feels like nothingness. Okay, it, you're in a state right now. So are you telling me that you feel like nothing like no emotion but most importantly not fearing or see because I'm, I'm curious about the panicking then so then what are we panicking over because if you're feeling neutral numb because I've had that too ma'am oh she's so fucking sassy yes okay so I know that when I felt like that, I, I didn't like it either because I instantly assumed that it meant it was going to negatively impact my manifestation. And to be honest, I've had moments, we're going to, like, I'm talking as recent as September, where I was in an extremely unfavorable state and I was full panic mode. Full. Because that was the first time since understanding states and really applying that and like really making that my manifestation game is embodiment. I couldn't get out of the state and I, I panic is like an understatement to how I felt. So like I can relate, but what I want to tell you is don't panic. We're never ever stuck in a state. We feel panicked and we feel fear because of the state you're currently in, just like me. I was in a state, an unfavorable state. And like I said, the panic was incredible. I was in tears most of the time. But that's because when, when we're in any state, we're wearing perception glasses, right? So those were the glasses I had on. I was perceiving things from, oh, uh, uh, Lord. I was perceiving things not nice, and I was very scared. And even though I knew better, I knew better. But when you're in a shit state, it, it's, it's hard to just be level-headed, to just get into that mindset of, like, everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? Thank you, Ashley. Like this video, y'all. Thank you very much. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it's just because of the current state you're in. It's not a permanent state. We are never actually stuck in a state. It's when we're trying to force ourselves out of it that it backfires. So I'm going to read your comment. It feels, wait, hold on. Because I know you wrote more than one thing. Okay, wait a minute. Because, like, this isn't having him feeling. Does that make sense? Yes, that's what I was thinking, too. Okay. It feels like now he's so far, and I wasn't feeling like that most of the week, but I'm, like, frustrated. It's just the state you're in. It's nothing more than that. And it's because you're in a state where you're not having a lot of, I don't know, 
I guess like feeling in regards to SP that then our mind starts doing the opposite and panicking. Well, because we're not thinking that we're in this perfect knowing state that now it's going to send things off or keep things at a distance. And now it's going to feel like our SP is a million miles away from us. They're so far. They're so separate. It's the state. And it's nothing more than the state you're in. It really isn't. And your specific person is never, ever far from you. No one is. Because we are all consciousness. We're all consciousness. You are always connected to your specific person at all times. Every second of every day. Connection. Because of consciousness. And yes, it is easier to shift when you don't actually try. It can be, but that's because you're not putting pressure on yourself. But you can shift on command with some simple what if statements. But when you're doing it from a placement of I fucking have to do this or my life is over and I'm going to lose my manifestations, then no, you're not going to shift. But when you just fucking chill out for a minute center yourself. And by centering yourself, I just mean calm down. Just chill. Everything's going to be all right. Everything is always going to be all right for what it's worth. Like I know it sounds so flippant when I say it like that. Everything's going to be all right. No, but really everything is always going to be all right. Everything really is always going to be okay. No matter what. Literally. So chill. Relax just a minute. Just relax. You're going to get back out of the state. You are not stuck there. We are never stuck in a state. We just return. We just return to states. That's all. And you're going to calmly, calmly walk your way back. And you'll get your feelings back. And SP is going to instantly reflect. You're going to be fine. Honestly. Start with the little what ifs. What if I found it easy to get in and out of states? What if I actually believe that it's easy for me to just say, no, now I'm in this state. Now I'm in the state of having and I have nothing to fear. What if I, what if I believed it was actually that easy? What if I actually believed that I was a master manifester and I, I really am this powerful? What if I believed that it was just as simple as me saying, I'm this in my new version? What if I could trust that and feel safe trusting that? What if? Start there. Because you're going to start feeling lighter anyway. And that's that's the ball rolling. That's getting things going. This is why I love you. And thank you. That makes me feel so much better. Oh, good. And I love you too. And listen. We're humans. We are humans evolving. That's all we're doing. We're never fucking this shit up. We aren't. When we feel like we're doing something wrong. Like we're fucking things up. It's your state. And it's really nothing more than that. And don't ever be afraid to legitimately ask for help. And I, I mean, obviously you can ask me for help at any time. That's not what I mean. But it, I'm going to use September as my example. When I was there, I can't tell you how many times that I, and you know, in the moment, I didn't even know who the fuck I was talking to. I'm just, I need fucking help. I need help. Get me out of this state. I would do that. I'd be screaming fits like a lunatic in my kitchen. Whether you believe it's your higher self, whether you believe it's your I amness, God, universe, angels, fucking moonbeams, passed away family members. It doesn't matter. Ask for help because you will get it. You will get a response. I'm going to tell you right now, I got a response Every fucking time. And they were quick, is what I'm trying to tell you. They were quick. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Whoever you think it is that's answering, does that even matter? But you're going to get a response. So, but just know, we are never, ever trapped in a state. You're, you're going to get out. Because I don't want anybody to feel the way I felt in September. Because I know it's scary. It is overwhelmingly scary. Very, very high anxiety. Fear. Lots and lots of 
fear was my September. Lots of fear. But that's how a shit state can make you feel. It's just perception and it's nothing more than that. Okay? Hawkeyes, thank you very much. Remember I wanted to karate chop my boss a couple weeks ago? <laughs> yes. Since focusing on my state, he's no longer being a window licking twat. Oh my God, I love you so much. I just, he's no longer being a window licking twat. I'm feeling great. I am the version of myself where everything always works out in my favor. Fuck yeah, it does, Hawkeyes. Fuck yeah. And I literally would have hopped a plane to go snap, crackle, pop your fucking boss's ass. No one messes with Hawkeyes, okay? She's ready to hop a plane and save my ass all the fucking time. I would have hopped a plane for you, girl. Got it? Fuck that. Focus on states, people. It changes everything. It does. Oh my God, it does. Oh my God, I can't, like there aren't enough words for me to express. They're not enough words. It's life changing. If it's just because you don't understand state, you're going to. It will click, I promise. It will click. Yes, not just your SP. It changes everything. In your life. She's one million good drilling gazillion quadrillion telling the truth. Everything changes. Literally. Because it has to. Because you're a new version of yourself. So everything in the 3D has to reflect. I promise. States is not a waste of your time. If you're struggling to understand states. Put the word states in the back burner and think of it as just who do you think you are? Who do you really think you are? What do you really think your life is? What do you want your life to be? Who do you think this version of yourself is? What do you, whatever you're manifesting, we'll use SP. When it comes to your SP, and I don't mean the actual person. I mean love, relationships. What do you really believe you can have in a relationship? No, states is not a mood. But thank you for asking that because it's good. I, we don't want anybody to think the wrong thought. So good. If you, it, listen, feel free to throw it in the chat what, you're, what you think it is so we can help you know correctly. States is not a mood. States is who you think you are. Is it possible to get in and out of states? Absolutely, yes. You're fluctuating through states at every given moment. We tend to return to a dwelling state, which is like your autopilot. But it's choice. Yes, you are the version of yourself who is. Insert what you want. Yes. So if you're manifesting a, a specific person. Mood as in personality. Hmm. I don't think that that's too far off. I'll go with that. States equals self-identity. Oh, there you go. Yes. But if you like the word personality, because I'm going to use, oh shit, I don't remember exactly how Sammy worded it, but she made a video a long time ago and, and made it, you know, oh fuck. All right, this is not a quote from her, but this is where I got the it girl thing from. Like, if there's like a celebrity or maybe another YouTuber that you look up to and you you think you know what their life is like and that looks tasty to you and you would like to be that it girl of, of whatever it is that you're into and what you think that it life would be like, that's a great starting place. But when you're manifesting specific things, what do you really believe a love relationship is for you? Just who you want to be. Yes. Good, good, good. Good. I'm loving it. Yes. 
So do you really think that you're meant to have a loving, fulfilling relationship? Do you really think that? Do you really actually believe that you're going to be able to pull it off? Do you really believe that once you manifest that specific person that you're actually going to keep that person? Or are you someone that self-sabotages out of fear? So you get as specific as you can with who you are. And if any of you answered those questions in a way where you don't get what you want and you don't think you're going to be able to get it, I don't think, you know, or you you don't think that you're going to be able to maintain the relationship or you're expecting the, the, the specific person to, and be, there's nothing, I'm salty. I love that you're being honest. Be honest so we can work on it. Slay, okay, I understand. Good. Good. Okay. So... If you're really, like the whole idea, let me say it like this, to really get the most sustainable change in your world, in your life, is being 100% authentic to what you're really thinking up here. Not what you think people want to hear what you're really thinking up here. Be authentic to yourself. You don't have to tell us but be honest with yourself like salty kept it kept it real and she was honest there's a part of her that does not believe she's going to be able i'm assuming she was talking about manifest the person or maintain the person really ever get that best version because now this i'm not saying this is what salty thinks i'm just saying this in general because maybe there's a belief there's a belief within that relationships are not long-term, are not successful. So you you be honest with yourself. Do you really think those thoughts? And if so, that's who you identify as. You're identifying as a version of yourself who doesn't have successful relationships. And you don't expect them to be successful. You don't expect specific person to show up for you. And we're looking for the worst outcome. It's a, it's a defense mechanism. But be as fucking authentic as Salty was with yourself. And if you're thinking that way, there you go. There's the first little nugget that we need to change. We need to start identifying as the version of ourselves that has successful relationships. It doesn't matter what you've already experienced in your life in the 3D. That doesn't fucking matter. That's what revision is for. If you're having trouble letting go of previous experiences, fucking revise it. But the going forward, you are this new version who does have successful relationships, who is open to accepting and receiving love from another person, who knows that you're going to be chosen, pursued, chased, wanted, desired, all the special words. It's really, really getting real with yourself and deciding that's not me anymore. This is who I want to be. So once you've really gotten authentic with yourself, then you start asking yourself, what would it feel like if, if I actually had that, if I was actually living that existence? I feel fake when I say I'm that version. Then how do I embody? You ask yourself, what would it feel like if you were really living that existence? And allow yourself in the moment to just actually feel it for a second. What would it feel like to actually be that version? Don't even worry about saying I am that version. If it, if it feels off to you, don't say it. Ask yourself, what if? What if? Would it feel like if I was? I'm also a hopeless romantic and I feel like I don't fit in this world at all. Oh, you could not be further from the truth because I am too. And you could not be further from the truth. And you can manifest whether you already have a specific person or you're, you're looking for new love. I am telling you, you can manifest a specific person to be the specific version that 
is just as romantic and is fulfilling all your hopeless romantic desires. I'm talking from experience. You absolutely can experience it. And I'll tell you what, I at one time thought that because I know I'm a hopeless romantic and I want the romance, I want to feel it. I want to experience it. And I don't want to feel like I'm forcing it to happen. I, I want to be surprised. I want I want to not know what's coming, but in a good way, right? Because I am. I'm a fucking hopeless romantic. I, I want it all. You can manifest it. And it will show up. And it will be fucking mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. So, no, you absolutely exist in this world. Don't you dare think that for a second, because that's bullshit. It's bullshit. I remember when I wasn't embodying my best self. Now I am my best self and get everything I want. Ooh, I like that, Brandon. Okay. I am the version of myself who looks younger each day. That is healthy. That is seen. That is heard. That is respected. Love it. Okay. Oh, I like that. Hopeful. Romantic. We should change that from hopeless romantic to hopeful. Sassy, sexy, saucy. Hopeless romantic or hopeful romantic. Okay. So. Chi girl. Thank you very much. Loved the fiery speech last night on being the center of our own world. My take on it. Love it. 2023 focus is on me. Scary to 100% let go of control and trust me as the apparent power, but feels right for the first time in my life. Oh my God, I love that, Chi girl. I love that. I understand states because, wait, I understand states better because if you go, oh, Denise, thank you so much. I love that. And I'm glad. That made me feel nice. Thank you. Okay, Chi Girl. Uh, thank you so much. You know, can I just say to all the so far um, generous super chats, once I get you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God. Um, I love it. I'm glad you appreciated. She's uh, Chi Girl is uh, referring. Wait a minute. Is it Chi or she? Wait, wait. Chicago. Chi Girl, Chicago. Girl, you know I was going to fuck it up, even though you told me the right way to say it. Damn it. Um, listen, she's referring to my ranty, fiery speech in the channel membership last night. And it, it, it was. I was feeling judged. And I was getting sexy, sassy, saucy with my uh, channel members in a good way. But... Um, yeah, I'm very, very happy to see that your 2023 focus is on me. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. Shy girl. Oh, fuck. It probably is, A, eh? and I've been fucking it up. Because she told me once and I forgot it. It probably is, shy girl. God damn it. <sighs> Y'all know I'm going to fuck up the names. Damn it all. Oh, also in the channel membership last night, um, our 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 boy Greg left me a comment, and he used he he was referring to the past, and he wrote NC for no contact. And just so you all know, I had to stop and pause because I almost said North Carolina. Do you remember when I did that on here? It came back, and I I was right on that verge of saying North Carolina again for no no contact. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I lose my shit. Wait, you got it. Did I get it? Which one? Was it she or she or shy? <laughs> Which one was right? The acronyms yeah, definitely always stump me. Damn. And then it's stuck and glued on YouTube forever. All my fuckery. <laughs> NC equals new comment. And then you retracted it. I got it, bitch. I got it before you retracted. All right. So, um, but I'm very, very happy 
for you. Chi, she, shy, girl. Shy. Damn! I was nowhere near it! Shy. Fuck. Listen, you're, you're probably gonna know that I'm gonna fuck it up again, right? Okay. In this moment, I'm gonna act cool like I didn't fuck it up. For, for she, town, or Chicago. Well, she, she, Chicago, not shy Chicago. So it's not my fault I fucked it up, okay? I remembered it had to do with Chicago. Anyway, I know it can be at first scary as hell. Scary as hell to start trusting and making yourself your state. The focus and your number ones, okay? I love you too, chi, she, shy girl. <laughs> That's where we call it from this point on, okay? Um, but I'm telling you, you've got this. You, you have got this. You've got the best fucking attitude ever. Like I have zero concerns for you. I think I, t I, think I already said that to you, but I meant that. You, you're, I'm just waiting for the success story. That's how I feel. You've, you've got it down. You know what you're doing and you're doing it right. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Um, what song was that from? And then I want to say, and you do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Anyway. I'm very happy for you. I know you're going to be a success. I know it. <laughs> one of them was Ice Cube. I know it. But I don't remember the other ones. LL Cool J. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Doing it, doing it, doing it. Well, that one's LL Cool J, right? <laughs> We've had minor contact since we last talked. Fuck, fuck, yes, awesome. Good. Very, very good. I'm very, very happy about that, okay? <gasps> Baby, we can do it. Take your time, do it right. We can do it. Do it tonight. Love, I feel for you. You feel for me. One life is all we have to live. Our love is all we have to give. I love that fucking song, okay? Listen. Just because I was born in 1974 didn't mean that I didn't enjoy disco and early 80s dancey music. I fucking loved it. And I'll tell you why. Because in the late 90s, when I was in my early 20s, I don't know about the rest of the fucking country, but where I lived, disco was like a thing for the local bands. We had the Electric Chick Magnets and we had the United Booty Foundation. Okay. And I was friends with both bands. So I would go see them every weekend. And so the whole bars would play nothing but the motherfucking 70s disco shit. So I was so used to hearing it that now I just, that's my correlation to that music is my early, you know, my early 20s. Yeah, the United Booty Foundation. I'll have to get out pictures. I know I keep threatening you with pictures of my booty foundation and the electric chick magnets time but it was the best fucking time of my life okay 1974 you're a few year, few years younger than my mom well i y'all know i'm 48 you know what i'm saying but damn i love that song so thank you hawkeyes okay i'm too immature for that band name what <gasps> you were listening to that song tonight Ooh, I love it. I got pictures. I'll have to dig out old pictures. Ooh, I'm getting crooked here. Hold on. Oops. Uh-oh. No, I don't want to end. How do I get rid of this? Okay, there we go. 
I love the SOS band too. I'm trying to think, I don't know why. I, I always correlate that song with a different band, but only because I used to play them back to back. What was it? Two songs. If you're thinking you're too cool to boogie, boy, oh boy, have I got news for you. Everybody here tonight must boogie. Let me tell you, you are no exceptions to the rule. Get on up on the floor, cause we're gonna boogie, oogie, oogie till you just can't boogie no more. I don't know, I'm sorry. I just love all that old music. Boogie, boogie no more. What's the other one? Hmm. It'll come to me. Boogie, oogie, oogie. Dun, 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 Oh, what is it? Oh, that's a song I'm stuck in my head now. Let's show the world we can dance. Something, something, straw our stuff. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Out on the floor. Shake your groove, shake your groove thing. That's what I was thinking of. Shake your groove thing, shake your groove thing. Yeah, yeah. Show them how to do it now. <sighs> I'm such a weird bitch. I like so much different music. I don't have like one favorite category. I'm so weird. God damn this thing. Fucking sit still, fucker. Okay. <gasps> Shaka Khan. Oh my God. I was just listening to that. Um. Oh God, my God, oh God. Come on. Something on the stars. Well, this night will last forever. Huh, 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 huh. Ain't nobody love me better. That song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, ain't nobody. There you go. Love that song. Yeah, shake your groove thing. Mm, love that. But my, my music taste is so all over. <laughs> Drop the EP already. Oh, that'd be fucking funny. Second just puts me in a good fucking mood. I don't know. Not that I'm trying to be a promotional thing. I don't know. And Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh my Jesus. Yes. Yes. Who else? I'm not going to lie. I also... I used to love um, Break-In. The Break-In soundtrack. Cause that came off the the breaking soundtrack for what it's worth. Useless trivia. The shit we talk about on here, and I'm nowhere near into these damn. Like I gotta get work in here. Um, Marvin, thank you very much. I can't remember me. Well, holy moly, I am going to spend Christmas with SP and his family for the first time, and 3P is not joining. But I go as his friend. Uh, Marvin. Gonna stop that right now. Don't even think about just being the friend. You're going to spend Christmas. It's mega movement. This is wonderful news. Fucking happy, merry, goddamn Christmas. This is wonderful. Very, very wonderful. Now... If SP is like going out of the way to remind you that you're just a friend, you should be revising instantly on the motherfucking spot. We don't accept every little thing they say. We don't accept. Not as master manifestors. In our head, we're like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, bestie. Okay, bestie. Your head over heels in love with me. You're going to marry me. Yeah, we're together. Bestie, bitch. We're together. Okay? Be revising on the spot. 
but this is wonderful. This is huge movement. Okay? No buts. But I go as his friend. The fuck you do, Marvin. The fuck you do. All right? You can do this. Look at the success you have had. This is major. And of course I remember you. Of course I do. I'm very happy for you. This is wonderful. This is great movement. You're not just his friend. It's not just friends. And it does not matter what that fucking 3D tells you. You decide who you are. Okay? You decide. All right. Ain't nobody video clip from Breaking Soundtrack. I'm telling you, yes. Okay? Secretly. I'm not going to lie. Can I just tell you, like, what a bitch I was as a kid? All right? Because Breaking came out and I was still little. I was little enough that I was still, like, stealing shit from my sister's bedroom. Um, was it, wasn't that early eighties ish? I think it was. So I was, I was, I think I was like 10 or 11 when fucking breaking came out, but let me just tell you. Okay. I loved that show or that movie. And, uh, of course I cannot think of character names at the top of my fucking head, but one of the dance, one of like, the, there was the three main characters, right? There was the girl and the two main dancers, right? So the tallest one, the tall one, what the fuck was his character name? But he was like a real actual dancer. Like he was a background dancer, like for real in real life. Break in 1984. I asked 10, okay? Can somebody tell me his fucking name and help me out here? Shabadoo, thank you. I loved him. I thought he was sexy as hell. No, it was Shabadoo but, and Ozone, but Shabadoo was the one I wanted. I loved him. I had a crush on him, okay? But keep in mind, I was 10 years old, but I was a bitch at 10. Because let me just tell you, I hated the girl. I hated her. Because she was, with, I just hated her. I hated how she talked. I hated everything about her. Because she was having my man, and it pissed me off. I was fucking 10. I was fucking thinking like that at 10. I hate her. I hate, I hate her voice. I hate her hair. I hate how she talks. I was such a douche. Because I wanted Chabadoo at 10 years old. But Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. Bitch. Didn't like your dancing, Kelly, and I hated your haircut. <laughs> you messed with my man. It was territorial. I was territorial at 10. Is that normal? Probably not. But I'm a Taurus. The bulls, like the horns were out. Don't mess with my man. I wanted Shabbatoo. He was so cute. And he could dance so good. Anyway. The nerve of Kelly. Thank you. Exactly. Okay. Now y'all have a little insight of my cuckoo-ness at a very young age. I also... I'm not saying anymore. I was crazy. That's okay. Lisa, thank you very friggin' much. My gosh. Merry Christmas, Kim. Your time video was so stellar and changed my whole brain. Blessings to you in 2023. Can't wait for post-Christmas shopping hauls. By the way, I manifested my brother's cancer-free stage three rare lymphoma. Holy fucking balls, Lisa. Oh my God. Oh my God, Master Manifesting Lisa. Another cancer. Another cure cancer HBIC. Oh my God. This is, uh, this is where do I go from here? Wonderful. I am so, I am so fucking happy for you. So fucking happy. It's fucking, it's congratulations even enough because I don't feel like it is. Fucking cancer. Poof. Gone. Cancer can't stand against motherfucking manifesting. Not HBICs. Mm -mm. Lisa, this is wonderful. And I love, you know what, Lisa? I think I've said it before to you, but I do fucking, I fucking love you. And I thank you so much for joining me on my other channel and watching my fucking shopping hauls and putting, putting up with my wackadoodleness in my other channel. And I appreciate you so fucking much. And I hope you have the best fucking Christmas ever. And 2023 is all of our years. This is going to be wonderful. 
And I just, I fucking appreciate you. You, you are also an OG on my channel. You've been here since like a, a hot fucking minute, way in the beginning hot minute. And I appreciate you very, very much. For real. And oh my God for your brother. This is fucking amazing. Guys. This is like literally the, the third, I believe, third or fourth cancer curing HBIC. This is major. Look what she just did. Stage three rare lymphoma. Any of you manifesting health? Hello? Stage three rare lymphoma. This is just so fucking wonderful. Congratulations. I was so sure. I didn't know how. I was so calm, but I was. I'll tell you how. Because you were in a state. You were in a state, girl. Whether you were even trying to get into that state does not matter. You were there. Well done. Nothing can stop our minds. Nothing. Noth there are no obstacles. There really aren't. We just fall for them. We believe them. We validate them over and over and over with fearing them. You don't have to fear anything. If we can fucking kill cancer, we can get a specific person. We can manifest some fucking money. We, we can do it. Okay? We can do it. You can revise a 3P event. You can revise motherfucking anything. There's nothing you can't revise. Well done, Lisa. Oh, that was a major zhuzhing for us all. That was wonderful. Your time video helped me with states. Good. That makes me feel happy. That puts me in a good mood. I love, love, because it does make me feel very, very good inside. I, I got to be honest. When I hear that someone finally has is understood states, because I know how long it was for me to not understand states. It, it was a long, embarrassing time. And like I said, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many times I had read all of Neville Goddard books and lectures and it was not clicking for me I'm talking two to three-ish times and it didn't make sense but when it did it did when it did it did but I like it's my mission to get people to understand states because it is life changing it is life changing this is wonderful Thank you for fucking sharing that with us all, too. That's a major zhuzhing for anyone. Fab Lane Jewels, thank you very much. Kim, I sense... I see last Wednesday you had to go. Oh, Super Chat. I almost said self-concept. God damn it. Okay. Kim, I sent Super Chat last Wednesday. You had to go. After blowout with SP, he left. No longer on my couch. He apologized a day ago. But that's about it. I'm over it. Family and jewels. For the love of the, all that's freaking fucking holy. Listen. You can give up manifesting your SP. I'm not going to force you to manifest who you don't want to manifest. But I don't think you want to give up. I think you're just saying that out of frustration. And you're letting the 3D dick to you who you are. You're letting the 3D choose for you. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Was excited to wake up next to him on his birthday, Christmas Day, but he messed it up. He tries to be controlling and says BS when he drinks. Okay. He tries to be controlling he says BS when he drinks. Do you hear how that is a story that we're keeping alive in your 3D? I'm not saying you're wrong for fucking being frustrating with shitty behavior from, damn it. Now, Meowie, at first I was going to self-concept before South Carolina. I went self-concept first. Um, but Fab Lane Jules. Listen, I don't blame you for being 
fucking annoyed with his fucking behavior. Return of the Mac. It is Return of the Mac. Ugh. Leanne, I'm loving you because just so you know, I've been like, I'm answering fucking questions, but I have been watching the song titles you're throwing up. And I, 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 there, I, I've wanted to burst out into song, especially when I saw the Rick James, give it to me, baby. Okay. Give me that stuff, that funk, that sweet, that funky stuff. Give it to me. Okay. Just saying. Merry Christmas to you too, Summer. Thank you so damn much for spoiling the shit out of us again. Like again, multiple again, Summer has done out of this world shit for me and Poop. Out of this world. This is not the first time that Summer has spoiled us. And it's beyond appreciated. We love you. And the Chi-Chi's. Don't be sorry, Leanne Richard. Keep throwing them. I'm enjoying it. Okay, but back to Fab Lane so I can, I can, the glow oil smells good. Oh, I'll be using it. I'll be using it. Okay. SP's going to be here all weekend for Christmas. Christmas we're doing it at my fucking house. I'm going to be slathered in that shit. Okay. But Fab Lane, we got to talk. Your feelings are valid. You being frustrated with his drunken behavior is valid. I'm not arguing that with you, okay? I get it. However, if we keep telling that fucking story that the house, that's how he behaves when he's drinking, it's gonna keep happening. We've gotta drop the stories. Now you're fucking frustrated. Wait, one of the, wait, one of the city trikey's plays, Lue Lue. I forgot the words. Oh, we gotta go. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but Fab Lane, we're keeping stories alive. Unfavorable motherfucking stories. Now, I know you're disappointed that he fucking moved out, but he'll be back. You didn't expect him to end up on your motherfucking couch in the first place. That was a snap, crackle, pop out of nowhere, and we all remember it. So come on, why are we giving up? Listen, unless it's just you are sincerely, I'm done, I'm over it, I want another SP, then fine. I do not judge you. I'm the first to say that I'm never gonna be in a relationship that I'm not 100% in love and enjoying every moment. I'll never do it. I will leave happily. Bye, bitch. Been nice hanging out with you. I'm bored with manifesting you. It's time for something different. There is nothing wrong with that. Hence why I bring the Shelly Bullard example in all the time. Because there's nothing wrong with changing. Nothing wrong with deciding you're not into someone anymore. No judgment. But I don't think that's what you're feeling. My inner conversations always go left and I cuss them out. You gotta stop that shit. You're going to keep, that's why you keep manifesting hot mess express motherfucking arguments. That's why. I was the, the fucking queen of inner arguments. I always won too. And yeah, I cussed him out. But then I kept experiencing it in the 3D. We don't want that. You don't want that. You want that, man. You want that, man. You know you do. So let's decide he's yours and stop letting that fucking 3D decide what you're gonna have. Stop letting the 3D tell you who you are. Stop letting the 3D control you. Yes, states, your videos and states are incredible. It changed everything for me. Oh, Laura, thank you so much. Thank you. That makes me happy.
I'm listening to my TV. It's playing like a Betty Boop Christmas song right now. And I, as a child, I loved Betty Boop. Fab Lane, we got to snap, crack, or pop your ass again. You're not giving up. Period. Decide what you want with that man and you stick to that story. Fuck what he's doing in the 3D. Decide who you are. And stick to it. All right. Is it Burku? Burku. I'm not going to try to say your last name because I'll fuck it up. Okay. Uh, dear Kim. How can we decide which SP do we want? Should we manifest both of them and then decide? Love you so much. Happy holidays. Love you so much. Happy holidays to you. And uh, yeah, manifest both. Manifest both. And then decide from there. There's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy yourself. See, let me just say this. You don't even have to like sincerely put the direct focus on either one. If you would put the focus on the state you're in, they would just keep showing up. If you're someone that wants to like say specific affirmations, you can do that for each one separately or use like, an, cause I don't know if you want the same thing, like same, same thing per relationship with them. But you can also use like, you know, all men, all men feel this way about me. All men treat me this way. You can all do that. But I'm saying put the focus on the version of you that you want to be. Like any man you want wants you back. That's your experience. That's who you are. You just have that certain something that no matter who you're interested, they are instantly uh, infatuated with you. Yeah, that's that's it. There are infinite states, which means infinite versions of ourselves. So there's a friggin' state somewhere or a reality somewhere where that is happening. So decide you're that. Okay? And they will come in regardless, along with many others. And then make your decision from there. Or let them duke it out. But of course you can do it. Janet Carson, thank you very much. What's the difference between affirming and getting into the state? I'm confused. Isn't affirming getting you into a state? Merry Christmas, Kim. Love you. Merry Christmas to you too, Janet Carson. I love you too. So let's let's talk about it. Okay. What's the difference between affirming and getting into the state? Well, affirming is in, in like in a generalization, affirming is new thoughts. It's you deciding, you know, to, to say to yourself new thoughts and hopefully that when you are affirming, you're allowing yourself to feel what you're affirming. And the reason why I word it that way is because, yes, there is mindless affirming, vain affirming, robotic affirming. Can they manifest? Can they help you to manifest? Can they help you get into a state? Yes, but if you are someone who is affirming and then when we're done with our affirming, you are consistently going right back to old thinking, you're changing nothing because your dominant thoughts or your dominant state is the old way of thinking, the old version. You're changing nothing. So... I think we've, I haven't put up my, my rant video about the robotic affirming because there were so many comments def defending robotic affirming because, because someone asked a generalized question on my, on one of my videos, I had, hadn't even responded to it yet, but other people came in and was like, yes, you can robotically affirm. Yes, you can. The person answering, asking the question never said that you couldn't robotically affirm, but there was so much defense of it and that you didn't have to believe you don't have to believe your affirmations that I'm recording. I made a video in response to it because the thing with affirming is there is so much, so much time and effort in this community put in. You don't have to believe them. 
you can robotically affirm and still manifest. No one's telling you you can't. But your relentless wanting to defend it says so much about you and where you're at that what the fuck are you doing defending disbelief? What are you doing? I don't even, I'm, I'm going to start going off again because that's not your question and I'm not taking it out on you. But I think that is probably the dumbest thing ever to stand firm and I don't have to believe my affirmations. I don't have to believe. No one fucking told you you had to. But uh, hey, Jack Nickel ass, if you would spend a little more time allowing yourself to believe in manifestation, allowing yourself to believe that you're actually going to get the fucking things you're affirming for, um, do you know how much more easier this journey would be for you? But you want to be so fucking defensive of, I don't have to believe, I can affirm vainly, I can affirm abundantly. No one fucking told you you couldn't, Jack Nickel. So settle the fuck down, okay? Sit down, Beavis. Seriously, you're wasting your time. Put the focus on fucking believing. Life will be easier. Shit will roll up faster. It's just the way it is. When you believe in manifesting, you're not constantly fighting against it. You wouldn't have to affirm all fucking day long for it either. Did you, did you ever think about that, Jack Nickel? See what I'm saying? See how fucking... I, you bring in the childish out in me. Fuck! <laughs> but, anyway. Yes, can affirmations get you into the state? Yes. All of the tools, techniques, they're, they're meant to help get you into the state. That they all are. So... Why, I, I think maybe you're asking me like from the placement of why, why am I so state focused? And that's because for my personal opinion, so this doesn't mean this has to be the same for anybody else. I don't like fucking affirming. I don't want to affirm during the day. I don't want to. Insert peanut gallery. Affirmations just new thoughts, Kim. They're just new thoughts. No shit, Sherlock. But you still had to take the time to come up with the fucking affirmation, didn't ya? Didn't ya? So shut up, sit down. See what I'm saying? <sighs> but really, but really. So I don't enjoy it. I don't want to affirm all fucking day long. I don't want to do it. I just want to think I'm the new me. That's all I want to do. That's what I want to do to manifest. I just want to say, this is who I am, and this is what I'm having. And because I make the fucking rules in my fucking reality, that's all I have to do. And it shows up like a fucking charm. So it's not that there's a different. It's always personal choice. There are plenty of people out there who love affirming. It makes them feel good. Then you should be affirming your balls off. Please do it. But for me, I don't like doing it. So that would make my manifestation game fucking feel boring, overwhelming, forced. Do you see what I'm saying? Some people don't like visualizing. And, you know, initially that was all anybody ever talked about in the beginning was you have to visualize, you have to visualize, you have to visualize. But if you hate it, it's going to make your manifestation game feel treacherous, just shitty. You should always be doing what you like. I don't like affirming. I like just deciding I am me and getting into that state of who I am. That's my favorite. So it's not, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to tell you like, oh my God, you know, Affirming won't get you into the state. That's not true. That's the purpose of affirmations, visualizations, scripting. It's the purpose of them to get you there, to help you believe you are this new person. So if you're not understanding states of consciousness, if it's not making sense to you yet, but you love affirming, oh my, affirm, 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 affirm all you want. 
eventually that affirming should make you feel um, natural. It should make the affirmations feel natural to you, which is helping you get into the state. But yeah, can you tell like when we get when we get the little snarky comments, I read them. And that's the voice I read them in every single time. Okay. Well, peanut gallery. I read them in that voice because that's what I envision you talk like. Affirmations are just new thoughts. So what are you not thinking? Really? Really, asshole? Really? Really? Did, did you feel better after that comment? Huh? Did you feel like you just, you just told me off? Oh, dear. Please. Okay. Anyway. So hopefully they answered your question. <laughs> oh. I don't know why that just little dimple on my cheek. I have to admit, though, I am probably on the luckier side. I don't get hit with a bunch of terrible comments, which I'm appreciative of. But. Y'all know I'm a snarky bitch. I can't help it. It's what it brings me joy. I like being sassy. It's fun. It makes me laugh. Squash the peanut gallery into peanut butter. Exactly. And I love peanut butter. Love it with apples. All right. Uh, I agree with you, Heidi. I feel like you can visualize in any person. I've also, I've always visualized in any person before knowing what manifesting consciously was. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Had you asked me that question, like in the beginning of my journey, I would have told you, no, 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 you, you must do it. You must do it in first person. Nope. I do not believe that anymore. I, I have made videos where I've said that. Like, no, I do not. I do not accept limiting beliefs at all in my world. I do not. So I don't believe that that's the only way when, when if you're someone who likes to um, visualize, you know, don't worry about that first third person bullshit. That's a limiting belief. I don't accept it. And I know people that visualize in any fucking person they want and still manifest. So it's the law of assumption. It's what you assume to be true will be true, period. Yes, rules are made to be broken. Just saying. Yes, too much pressure to be first person if you naturally can't. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Charlie Nesuf Pass. I'm, I'm, I'm probably um, butchered your name. I'm sorry for that. Thank you very much. Hello, Kim. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you too. What would you affirm to meet or date a dude who doesn't know you or have your number? Logic makes it seem, wait, wait. logic makes it seems fuzzy. Love your vibes. Oh, well, thank you so much. I love your vibes. Yes, fear mongering. Totally agree. Can't stand it. Okay. Um, Charlie, so I'm making the assumption that you do know the person or you know of them. It's just that they don't know you. Which, which obviously doesn't matter. So what I would do if I were you. So wait, okay. So watch it. Makes it seem. Do you visualize? No, you affirm. So when I was manifesting my dream man, I, well, I guess that I didn't know him. So that's not going to help you, no, is it? Well, yeah, it could, still could. Hold up. So when I was manifesting from my dream man list. I obviously did not know who the person was, but you do. So instead of using the phrase dream man, you could be inserting the you know, the person's name. Um, but because I knew that, you know, whoever this dream man was going to be, they didn't know me, definitely didn't have my number. And I didn't know how the hell we would meet. I didn't know any of that. I would script... I was more of a scripter. I would script in past tense just because I liked, I like 
past and present tense, preferably. Um, but it doesn't matter if you do past or present. It's just, that was my choice. So I tend to answer these type of questions in the past tense, okay? But you, if you want to do future tense, you can. Um, I would script that I was, you know, finally now in, you know, in the most loving relationship of my life with my dream man because I didn't know who he was going to be. I was manifesting new love. So for you, if you know the person's name, don't put the dream in. Put their name. And just, you know, I'm finally now in this loving, fulfilling relationship or whatever you want to call it. Whatever the details or the words that make you feel judged, use those words. And I would write it or affirm it as if you're already in it. And, you know, if there's something specific that you want to experience in the relationship, like you want them to, you know pursue you and make you feel cherished, loved, adored, all the things, all the feels. Affirm it. Affirm that this person, you know, is pursuing you, is making you feel wanted, desired, loved, all the things. I just, like I said, I have a tendency to do past tense. It's just my preference. So that's what I would affirm. That's what I did script. And I would script it all the fucking time. And it worked, obviously. It worked. Cheryl, thank you. Oh, thank you so friggin' much, Cheryl. Damn! Oh, uh, one more. Before I go to Cheryl, Charlie, what I want to say to you is I know logic gets in the way sometimes. I know. But that's the beauty. It doesn't need to make logical sense to us over here in manifestation land. It doesn't fucking matter if it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense to us because it's the 4D taking care of things, right? It's the 4D. It's our I amness, or if you believe universe, it's your universe. It's the 4D handling your 3D. So it doesn't have to make logical sense. Your 3D doesn't have to look a specific way for this to line up. Your consciousness, right? You at your core, our consciousness, you're connected to that specific person or whoever this person you're asking me about, you're already connected to them. So it's like your, your consciousness to consciousness is already communicating. So it doesn't have to make logical sense. I know logic gets in the way, but that's why logic isn't invited to manifestation because we don't, we don't need it. Nothing has to make sense to us for us to get what we want. Okay. Okay. Cheryl, again, thank you so very friggin' much, Mrs. Generous. Merry Christmas, Kim. Thank you for all you do for us. And am I going to be that person? Are you and June yet? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Cheryl. I appreciate you. Let me find you and I will pull you, Cheryl. Okay. Am I going to be this person? You just were, but that's okay. Okay, because I've done it for other people. Do it for you too. Um, Cheryl, I will search for a Cheryl. But it, you know, it would be great if you could email me. Um, if you're if you're still in the live stream right now, it would be great if you could email me right now and let me know. Yo, I'm Cheryl from the fucking live stream. Get me in, bitch. If you could, that would be very, very helpful. And I wouldn't have to search. You would just be there. Um, but if you're not here right now and you're watching the replay, email me now. Okay. But otherwise I will try to find you and I, I will get you in. I will pull you out of the way. Okay. And Merry fucking Christmas. Thank you for the generous gift. Helen, holy balls, Helen. Beautiful bestie bitch. You spoil me consistently and... You've given me some super thanks that I haven't had a chance to come back and fucking thank you for, but I've seen them and I fucking appreciate it. But my God, Helen, you are so fucking good to me. You spoil the fuck right out of me on top of the gifts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Merry Christmas to you and poop. Get something for me to you. Thank you for everything you have done for me and all the HBICs. You are the best, brightest, and beautiful bestie. You are the best, 
brightest, beautiful bestie. I fucking appreciate you. You have been nonstop wonderful to me since literally day one. And it, I, I don't have words. Thank you so fucking much. Honestly. And I hope you have the most bestest Christmas ever. And I want you to get all your shit. I want everything to be wonderful for you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Jesus. You guys fucking spoil the fuck right out of me. I appreciate it so much. I take nothing for fucking granted. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. E free. Thank you very much. Hi, Kim. Hope you and your family have a wonderful weekend. Revision is working well. Thank you. Sorry I missed you last night. Had to drop out. E free. Thank you so goddamn much. Merry fucking Christmas. And I'm glad revision is working for you. This is wonderful. And don't ever apologize for having to drop out. Shit happens. It's okay. Shit happens. It's okay. Thank you so much. Carla Killian, thank you very much. Can't send Super Chat over $2. Well, you know, and like in, there's this one part of me that's thinking, well, you don't have to send me a super chat. It's okay. But at the other time, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know because I don't control that. So it's not like there's anything on my end where I can put limits on any of you to purchase super chats or the amount you can purchase. I have, I have no control over that. It's totally a YouTube thing. Literally everything on here is really controlled by YouTube, even down to the channel membership. I don't control it. I can give it a title and a price, but how YouTube is handling it, I, it, I have no control. So I don't know why that is. I think that's weird. I'm wondering if you were to um, sign out of the live and then rejoin us and see if that changes. But I also don't want you to feel obligated to purchase a super chat. I don't want you to feel like you have to. And just heads up, poop is probably going to bark in a minute because I can see that my son is out of work early. So she barks every time he opens the garage door and I, I don't know why. Just be prepared. Jen, thank you very much. M MC Kim. Been good in the state and being a badass B. I actually am one. Getting movement and then random purge type crap, mainly with SP. What the fuck? Things going well and then weirdish. Seen this before? Mega purge. Okay. Well, he opened the door quietly enough that my dog did not wake up. So this is a good thing. So she's not going to bark after all. Um, all right. So Jen, let me say it like this. When it comes to purges, have I seen this before? Yeah, I have. But I also think it's really important to like no longer label things as I'm purging because I feel it puts it puts like a limiting energy on us that we can expect to have to have a purge and I don't like that I don't like that mentality at all you know from my own experience when I believed that purges were a part of the process well, then what did I experience? Purges. But when I stopped labeling it as a purge, I stopped having an expectation that I was going to experience one. And listen, I'm sorry to bring it up again, but I'm telling you that when I started making my state my priority, my experiences of shitty things in the 3D is, is very few and far between. Doesn't mean it's never. Doesn't mean I never have a shit moment. Um, Robert Zink loves a purge. Flying high, like soaring like eagles or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's funny. But, um, put your focus back on your state. Get back into the mindset of 
we don't have to be attached to the 3D. Meaning, when we stop looking at the 3D as not, not that you you're needing your validations. That's not kind of that's not what I mean because I don't I don't think that's what you're doing. But when you see it as all right, I've I've identified patterns, I've identified limiting beliefs, I've identified where I'm at. Fuck it from this point on. Fuck the 3D. It doesn't matter how SP is showing up because if I make my state my priority and stay there as often as possible. We don't have to be perfect. 3D has to reflect. 3D has to catch up to my state. Is there some semblance of a delay? Yep. Yep. In my experience, there is. Um, it's not always exact, meaning it's not the you know exact amount of time each time I've manifested. There's always been some, but I have manifested or seen, let me word it like this, seen changes reflecting my state. I have seen it in, in, in as few as, you know, a day, like 24 hours. So to be honest, when you think about it, I think that we see semblances of it starting to reflect even sooner than that because I know I've seen comments and I know I've experienced it that like, when you're in a lull, when you're in, and you know you're in a lull, lower state, because remember, I like to think of states as going up a set of stairs. When you're in a lower state, SP usually reflects pretty fucking quickly. So things can change in a dime. I mean, or in a hot minute. <laughs> in a dime. In a hot minute. So try to stop seeing it as I'm um, experiencing a purge and see it more of who am I being right now? Why am I, why is the 3D making me feel this way? Why am I allowing it? What story am I still holding on to that I'm feeling this way? What is SP doing that's triggering me? Why is it triggering me? What story is it attached to? What belief is still brewing within me that I'm having this response? That's, I like those questions better because a lot of time, to keep it real, a lot of time you find that you're actually in not the most beneficial state after all. Because, listen, there's infinite states and you can think you've been working on your state. Now, don't get discouraged. Don't, don't be discouraged by this. Look at it as, as another tool that you can think you're working on your state. But when we're, when we're triggered or jolted triggered by the 3D, you, you know that that's your validation of what state you're actually in. Doesn't mean you didn't escape into the more beneficial state. It, it, it doesn't mean that you never got there. But there are infinite states. So there's like the most beneficial state where you're getting all your shit. But there's obviously if there's infinite states, there's another state where you're getting some shit. But you're still triggered because some beliefs are still existent in this state. But don't confuse that when I say that, you know, beliefs don't follow. But beliefs don't follow but can be in existence because there's infinite states. So you know in that moment when you're triggered, you're still resonating with a belief. And that's why we have the trigger. It doesn't make us a failed manifester. It just... It just means, okay, why am I still feeling this way? What story am I still telling? How, wait, I'll get to you in a second there, Raven. Um, I, I don't want anybody to look at triggers or when we react, when we respond. I don't want you to ever look at that as a, as a failure moment because it's not, you know, how else are you going to know what state you're in if, if you're not catching it by what thoughts you're having than by a trigger? A trigger will let you know. So if anything, it's wonderful fucking feedback and it's not permanent and your SP will change. It's just time to go back in. It's time to go back in. 
Does that make sense? I hope it does. And for what it's worth, Jen, I just want to say it's, listen, from what I've seen through my coaching and what I've seen within the community, the SP category is always the category people have some funky dunky shit with. And <clears throat> I don't mean that from a like limiting belief, like it has to be the worst area. It's not what I mean. It's just that it seems to, that's our most sensitive because it involves our heart. It involves our heart and it involves another person. And I don't care what anybody says, SPs sometimes can make us feel or at least question manifestation a little more often than the other categories do. That's just from what I've seen and from my own experience. The SP category, and I think it's because it has to do with another direct human being, a direct human being who has your heart. So it feels a little more sensitive and we're a little more sensitive to how they're showing up because we're still human beings. Getting jiggy with it. Na, 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 Thanks, Leon. Okay. Mint Ganadora. Thank you very much. Yay. Made it to the Kim Christmas Spectacular. Aiming since my birthday. Simply will ask place and coaching line Mint to find and wish a ton of Yuletide cheer, Mint. Oh, Mint, I think you've asked me before and I forgot. God damn it. All right. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you, Mint. Okay? Carla Killian. Hi, Kim. Love you and thank you. Please check 430. Please check 430. I will check. 430. I got you, Carla Killian. Got you. Merry Christmas and love you too. All right. Kim's got to... Hold on one second. I don't want this. I'm trying to see if there's any... I was going to see if there's any member chats because I don't want to miss the member chats. I don't know why YouTube doesn't have a place where the membership chats are still in existence so I can read them like I can read the other super chats because I feel bad that the channel members, their, their chats should be priority just because they're part of the GM membership, you know what I'm saying? Fuck. Well, fix that for me, fucking wishful raven. Fix that! Help a bitch out! All right, so I know actually she, well then tell me how. I'm going back to your comment though. I got to find it. Give me a sec. Kim, so how do we know when to set a boundary in the 3D versus ignoring it and going in our 4D? Well, <clears throat> you got to email me. God damn it. I got, I got a fucking list. Oh, I know. Um, an automated thing using your accounts. Interesting. Um, how to know when to set a boundary is, let me say it like this. You're always ever manifesting, working from the 4D, right? That's where our imagination is. However, because you're still a human being having an existence in the 3D, the boundary setting is choice. There is never a right or wrong time to set a boundary. You know, that's why I bring up often that just because we're manifesting doesn't mean we have to be fucking lap dogs and accept shitty fucking treatment from people just because we know they're reflecting us and we know about manifestation. That doesn't mean we have to tolerate shitty behavior from fucking anybody. And if you think I do... I don't. I don't. I will speak my mind and set a fucking boundary if I fucking feel I want to. If I want to. And I'll tell you why. 
in my past in relationships, I would have a tendency of being afraid to set that boundary. And I would keep allowing shit behavior from people, even, even when I knew about manifestation. And when it came to one of my solo vacations, I didn't want to, but I just did set a boundary. It was just, I can't explain. It was inspired action is what it was because it was so out of my normal character, but it, it I didn't even think about it. I just did it. And, you know, a few short days later is when we got back together. But that's the difference between manipulating and forcing your 3D. But regardless, that's, that's another topic. When anyone is doing something that is making you feel uncomfortable, set a fucking boundary. It's your choice. Absolutely. You never have to fear that setting a damn boundary is going to ruin your manifestation. Right? Because we're doing all of the work in our 4D. You're asserting yourself with the boundary. However, I'm not talking boundaries of um, if you don't text me every fucking morning, I'm done with this relationship. No, that's you being an asshole. That's you being a manipulative asshole. See what I'm saying? But there's a difference to setting a boundary of someone treating you like dog shit. Okay, but a text message isn't somebody treating you like dog shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So... How to know when to do it? It's go with your gut. If you're if you're currently accepting treatment that you know that you deserve to be treated better, it's a good time to set a boundary. You have that right. I don't mean ultimatums. Because that's still backhanded manipulation. As in, if you don't do this, I'm done. I'm all done. No. That's you manipulating the 3D. But setting a boundary. Like there's a difference between setting a boundary and manipulation. Okay? There is. But us being manifestors doesn't mean we have to be doormats. Okay? How do you set a boundary without affirming unfavorable behavior has happened to us? Well, it's not necessarily you deliberately affirming if it's if it's an experience and you're seeing it and you're feeling it and it's making you feel a certain way. Set the fucking boundary. If you want to revise the experience, go right ahead. But set the fucking boundary. For some of you, that's part of your fucking journey, whether you believe that or not. Especially if you've been someone who never stands up for yourself. Just saying. Yes, sometimes silence can be a boundary. No response. Walking away for a few minutes. Taking a breath. Yes. Kim, can I have a little rant so that I can get back to my God state instead of worrying about my ego? Yeah, what the fuck? And all the states are God states just for what it's worth. I, mean, I really don't care what you call your state, but every state's a God state. Every state. God has created all states. Okay. 100% the new me has to stand up for herself. Yeah. Good. Please do. Okay, let me see if I can update this. Oh, my Lord. Holy moly. It's a bunch. Okay. Jen, thank you very much. Part two. Merry Christmas, Kim. I found you early this year, and you are a big part of why I am hopeful for once. You encourage people who may be at their lowest and help so many. I would have given up long ago without you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God, Jen. That was so wonderful. Thank you so fucking much and Merry Christmas to you. And oh my Lord. Oh, you ne no one ever has to give up. Honestly, don't give up. I promise. I promise. If you make who you are your priority, things will change. Things will change. 
Oh my God, things will change. And things can be wonderful. Wonderful. Don't give up. You're giving up on yourself when you give up. Because your desires are fucking meant for you. We weren't sent here to live an existence that we hate, that we never get to experience joy. It's just, no, that's not how this is. You don't have desires for the answer to be, no, you can't have it. Nope, can't have it. No, it's not how this works. So, Jen, that was so nice. Thank you so much. Oh, give me a little zhuzh, a little, little, little emotion. Erica Lewis, thank you very much. While I was in no contact, I pixelated in my mind SP sending me a gift. This week, he asked for my Addy to send a gift to show his appreciation. I love this. I still have Erica Lewis's uh, success story coming, and it's a good one. But it's just that she sent me a follow-up email, and I haven't recorded that part yet. But I have the other part recorded. So excited. It's a good one. So that is coming. I love that, Erica. S, thank you very much. Hey, Kim, how would you go about revising a name or age for yourself or something? If you want, like changing your name or changing your age, re revise your date of birth. Revise your date of birth. And anytime you think of your birthday, no. Nope. Like, for example... I was born in 1974. How about, no, I was born in 1984. Hmm. And just stick to it. Stick to it. Now, your logical mind, let's keep it real. Your logical mind is going to beat the shit out of you on that one and say, no, the fuck you're not. Oh, bitch. No, you're not. Okay. But be more disciplined than your fucking logical mind. Anything can change. I know. Um. Oh, fuck. What's her name? She changed the age of her dog. Documents changed. So yes, it can happen. It's just you being more disciplined and determined than allowing the 3D to tell you a story. Now, I know it seems cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that we're even suggesting that you can do that. But you fucking can. There is nothing you can't do. Nothing. Okay. Cabria. Mia, thank you very much. Hi, any tips for manifesting a pregnancy? Oh, that's where I would legitimately be. This, because I can't help it. I favor past tense talking. I just do. I favor past tense. So, because it just, when I was first starting out, scripting in past or present tense made me feel like I was living in the end. That was me living in the end. Not necessarily, but that's what I thought when I was doing it. And it made me feel good. So I favor it now more out of habit. But I would be affirming like, you know, oh my God, I'm so happy I'm finally not pregnant. I cannot believe I'm nine months pregnant. I can't believe I'm finally about to be a, a mom. That's what I would do. I would talk as if it's already happening to me. And then, you know, ask yourself, what would it feel like to know that you're actually fucking pregnant right now? And about to have a fucking baby. What would that feel like? How exciting would that be for you? Let yourself feel it. And then let me know when you get knocked up. Because it'll probably happen. Don't go logical. Logic is not invited to the manifestation party. Don't be tricked by your logic. Okay? Limitless queen betch. Betch. What the fuck is a moonbeam? <laughs> I just say the moonbeam thing because, listen, I believe that there is a God. What that God is, I'm not sure of. I don't think it's a he. I don't think it's a she. And I'm not sure if it's it. I don't know what. I just know that the, there is the I amness. Okay, I amness is God to me. But not everybody believes in God. Some people believe that it's just universe. Okay. 
some people don't, I'm not sure what they believe. They, they just think, okay, it's only my subconscious mind. That's it. There's nothing outside of it. It's just subconscious, nothing more. Okay. I don't give a fuck what you believe. So I throw in the moonbeams there out of sarcasm, like, because I don't, I don't fucking care what you believe in. As long as you're in the manifestation, we're still going to be friends. You don't have to believe what I believe. Right? So I throw out every selection I can think of so I can make it seem like, you know, everybody's fucking included here. You believe in the universe. You believe in your subconscious. You believe in God. You believe in fucking moonbeams. You believe in aliens. I don't care. If you want to talk manifestation, you and I will be friends. That's what I, that's why I say moonbeams. Okay. Sarah says she. Oh my God. It's been a hot fucking minute. Sarah says she. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, Kim. Buy yourself a Christmas coffee for me. I love you to pieces. Miss you all. Oh my God. Talk about OGs in the house. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you. I miss you. I miss chatting to you. I hope everything's going absolutely wonderful, perfect, lovely for you and your world. And I'm sure it is because you're fucking fabulous. And thank you so much. I do. I love you too. I miss you. Sarah says she is also an OG. An OG in the house. I love this. Thank you so friggin' much. Cass and Queen of Everything, thank you very much. Merry Christmas, Kim. SP said he loves me recently. Said, as a friend, but it's still a huge movement. Yes, the hell it is. We've been friends for two years. He's not an ex. I love that. Merry Christmas to you, obviously, Miss Cass Ann. And yes, it is huge movement. Yes, it is. Not as a friend. No, he didn't say that. He said as a lover. As a sexy, sassy, saucy lover. Of course he does. That is movement. Well done, Cassian. Lara D. Emanuela. Oh my God, what a sexy ass name. Lara D. Emanuela. Thank you very much. Hello. What if two or more people are manifesting the same exact thing? Who, in your opinion, gets the manifestation? Thank you. <clears throat> um, well, if we are referring to your reality you will win unless you believe someone can win outside of you. No one else is manifesting within your reality. Now, I do know that there are people out there who do believe that, you know, their SP was also manifesting them. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't go out of my way to correct them. I don't correct them because I don't give a rat's fuck what somebody else thinks about their reality. If they want to believe their specific person manifested them to that, I don't care. That's fine with me. Does that make you happy to think that way? Then please keep doing it. There's no judges. Now, if you were to ask if I actually believed that, I would say the truth to them. I would say, no, I don't fucking believe that. I believe you are the only person that can fucking manifest in your reality. But I don't give a fuck if you think differently, Right. So, like, just talking basic bitch manifestation, you're it. You're the only one manifesting within your little reality bubble. Our bubbles are intermingling, yes, but you're the one. Because I don't know how else to explain. I don't want to make it judgy. I want to make this more judgy, but it's just you. It's just you. And everyone is reflecting back to you. So, listen, you don't need to worry about somebody else manifesting your shit. You don't. So who wins? It should be you every fucking time. But if you start giving in to fear and start worrying that the other person's going to win, if that becomes your dominant thinking from the state you're in, right? Because our thoughts are only a product of the state we're in. If you keep thinking that way, then boom, it becomes a possibility. But I'm telling you as basic bitch manifestation shit goes you're the only one manifesting you just you okay Catherine Gentile or Gentile thank you very much I love you 
I love you. Advice on changing SP. He isn't as romantic. Gets distant when I talk about feelings. He Snapchats his friends who are female. Even when I tell him it bothers me. Hard to be in a state when he pisses me off. Okay. Listen, I understand that. I do. So when it comes to changing your specific person, please realize to keep it real, right? Because I, it's my job just to tell you really how it is and then how you take it from there, you know, it's on you. But we are never really changing specific person. We're never changing them. We are only ever changing us. Us. Because they're showing up reflecting. So when we don't like the version of our specific person that we're currently intermingling with, we have to start taking a look at, okay, why are they showing up this way? Why is he being a selfish fucking twat right now? Because he's behaving like a selfish twat in my opinion. He is. I wouldn't like how he's showing up either. I would not fucking appreciate any of the shit he's doing. So the way you feel is valid, right? But he's showing up that way because there's a belief within somewhere. Either we don't feel good enough or we don't feel chosen. And there could be some other things. I mean, I'd have to talk to you a little more detailed to really know for sure what's going on. But those two are screaming out at me. Especially with you having an issue with him Snapchatting other females. Now, listen, I'm not judging you for that. I wouldn't fucking like that shit either. Okay, I'm a territorial bitch. But, but it's bothering you for a reason. Because it's a threat. It feels like a threat. And when it feels like a threat, there's the fear of losing our specific person. Well, why do we feel threatened by another female? Because somewhere within, we either don't feel good enough or we don't feel chosen or maybe there's a fear of abandonment. So you want to focus on becoming the version of yourself that doesn't have those beliefs. Who knows her worth? Who knows what she deserves? Who knows she's a fucking high value woman who deserves the best loving, fulfilling treatment from her person? And then the idea is he will begin reflecting your new version or if we don't like that mindset, think of it as, as you become this new version of yourself, you're by default choosing the new version of him. You're entering a whole new reality where he has to show up reflecting the new you. It's all about you. It's why we are in control of our own reality. Because everything revolves around us. You know that fucking funny saying? The world doesn't revolve around you. Don't listen. You know damn well that that little statement was created on purpose so that we would never clue in to literally the world does revolve around me. Thank you very much, bitch. See what I'm saying? So, put the focus on you. Put the focus on you being the version of yourself that knows her worth, knows her value, and is not intimidated about dumbass females on motherfucking Snapchat. Who gives a fuck? When you're the fucking HBIC of your reality and you know who the hell you are, you won't be sweating any of that shit and he'll start reflecting better. Okay. Lara D. Emanuela. Again, thank you very much. Someone dear to me told me that they feel they are a woman and not a man. For various reasons, we are in no contact. Can I manifest them to change their mind? Thank you for everything. I love you, Kim. I need to reread. Someone dear to me told me that they feel they are a woman and not a man. For various reasons, we are in no contact. Can I manifest them to change their mind? Thank you for everything. I love you, Kim. Okay. I just... Can, can you help me out on why we need to change their mind and their decisions of who they feel they really are? Now, I'm going to keep it real with you. Listen, we have access to infinite states, which means infinite versions of ourselves. And, oh, don't you dare start tempting me with the damned. Don't start tempting me with the damned. I won't be able to concentrate. You know I love Dave Vanian. All right. So, 
back to Lara de Manuela. You have access to infinite realities. You can choose any version of any person at your beck and call. So yes, yes, you can manifest this. But I, I, the, the, the little person in me is like, why? Why is that bothering you? That's my, my question. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to manifest. It's your fucking reality. But I do think it's worth taking a look at why do we want to change someone's mind on that? So you have someone in your wording that is dear to you, someone important to you, someone you care about deeply, and they confessed something very, very important to you. Think of it from that perspective. They confessed something really, really important to you. Because I can't imagine that being an easy thing to talk about, that they don't feel that they're a man. They think they're actually a woman. So I imagine that was a struggle in itself for them to even confess that. Why do we want to change it? I, I, I'm, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I'm not one to judge what other people want to manifest. But I do think you should take a look at to why, why do you want to change that? What, what are you, what kind of a story are we attaching? You see what I'm saying? What, what story are we attaching that, that they, they want to have this change or they, they probably want to live their life in, in the fullest existence. You know what I'm saying? So take a look at that. It bothers me because I guess I'm afraid. Okay. Afraid of what though? Afraid of what? You can manifest whatever you want. I'm not telling you you can't. They're, like I said, listen, I, I can't be a hypocrite and tell one person that there's infinite states and you can manifest infinite versions of anybody you fucking want. I can't say it to one and not another. But what I'm saying is in, we want to take a look at why. Because it, that's not just manifesting a specific person. This is, let me, let me word it this way. I have been asked, aha, there you go. All right. Afraid it can never work out between us. So is there is there like romantic feelings in the equation? Because I've been asked a multitude of times while I've had my channel, it like, can I turn a gay man straight? Or can I turn a straight girl gay? Or, or any whatever direction. Yes, romantic feelings. Okay. Let me just say this to you. Don't worry about what their feelings are as far as it doesn't matter. It, that doesn't matter because love transcends all. Love is love. So we never have to worry about making someone gay or getting someone to be straight. We never have to worry about any of that because love transcends all. And the more that you put the focus there, things will naturally work out. Things will naturally work out for you. Don't fear. Don't fear the confession they made. Don't fear that. Love transcends. Love transcends. Every single one of us is consciousness, which is in another way of saying we are all unconditional love. Love really does transcend all. We never have to change someone's physicality or their, their choice in sexuality, anything like that. Focus on the love because love can transcend any circumstance, situation, sexuality, choice, life choice. It doesn't matter. Focus on the love. Don't fear. Don't think it can't work out. Focus on love. I, I'm, I promise. Put the focus there. It, it fucking takes care of everything. It really does. Okay. And I hope you know, like, I wasn't picking at you. I just knew there was more to this. And I didn't want to let that go. And I also didn't want someone else to watch the video. And perhaps they're in the same exact scenario and then feel terrible about themselves for, you know, feeling the same way. Or feeling that maybe they're the person who is a man and does not feel like they are. And I don't want them to think that that's the wrong choice. Or that it's bad that they feel that way. So... I wanted to dig a little deeper, but I, I, I wasn't picking at you, okay? 
Super Saiyan. Oh my God, another OG Super Saiyan. Thank you so much. Hi guys. Miss you so much, Kim. SP said, I love you and things are moving fast. I truly dropped him and focused on other things. He pursued me. I love this for you, Super Saiyan, because you fucking deserve it. You fucking deserve it. And I'm so proud of you. And nothing, nothing but validation of when you put the focus on who you are being, everything else will fall in line. And it can be super fucking fast. Super fast. Very fast. Uh, very, very fast. You could do this. I love this for you, Super Saiyan. Marta, thank you very much. Thank you for hope, love you gave in 2022 from Italy. Oh my God, Marta, thank you so much. And Merry Christmas. Yes, focus on love. It will take care of everything. And it will. Because that's all we are to our core is unconditional love anyway. For reals. Even when I'm sassy, I'm still unconditional love on the inside. Charlie, Mr. Pass. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Thank you very much. Hi, did I miss my first super chat answer? I cannot tell. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Kim. Well, yeah, I think you did because I did answer it, but maybe it's because by the time you purchased this super chat, I hadn't got to it yet. But thank you so much. And I feel bad you just spent another 10 bucks just to ask me that. But I did answer you. You might have to scroll back, rewind the video. Allie, thank you very much. SP missed the flight back home and I, out of the blue, reached out to him today. We spent the day together and something I visualized happened today. Oh my God, love it. Well done. Hello, Master Manifester. Well done. Congratulations. Now get back on your manifestation game. Because look how quickly things can fucking change. Well done, Allie. RC, thank you very much. Change of appearance and facial bone structure help, please. Braces messed some stuff up. It's been hard to ignore 3D given I can always feel my mouth. Okay. So this is what I would say to anyone manifesting any type of appearance change. It's, I realize we need to look in the mirror to make sure we don't have like boogers hanging out of our fucking noses. We gotta brush our teeth, do our hair. I get it. But it's gonna be a conscious choice of yours to not stare at what hasn't changed yet. That's the biggest thing to appearance changes. Stop overanalyzing what hasn't changed yet. That's no different than constantly focusing on SP not showing up right yet. Right, We want to focus on the having, the having. And if it's too much resistance for you to say, you know, I, m m my appearance has changed. I, I, I am looking differently now. It's okay to say I'm going to. My face is changing. You know, my bone structure is changing. I am having the appearance I desire. Okay. But my strongest recommendation is don't overanalyze yourself in the mirror and then focus on what you don't see differently yet. Try not to do that. That's the hindrance in appearance changes. Just want to say that. Okay. Monica Miskova. Thank you very much. Hi, Kim. How to get SP to say he loves me out loud. Tag me as his girlfriend on social media and delete his dating apps. You focus on becoming. Oh, thank you, Queen. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, RC. Um, okay, so you put the focus on you becoming the version of yourself as the, the woman who's high fucking value. I'm filing my nail because it's bugging me. Uh, uh, high fucking value. Of course, of course he's not on dating apps. Of course he's not all over fucking social media and doing stupid shit. He's pursuing you, giving you endless attention because why? Because you're good enough. You're chosen. You're amazing. You're already this new version of yourself now. That's how you do it. Honestly. Listen, I literally would just start 
asking myself, what do I want to feel like when I wake up in the morning? When I wake up first thing in the morning, how do I want to feel? What do I want to think about my fucking reality, my life, my relationship, or anything else you're manifesting? How do I want to feel? How do I want to think as this new person? What do I want my life to look like? How do I want to feel living that life? And I just started telling myself the details of how I felt, how my life looked. And I would just talk to myself. And then I would allow myself to feel as if I'm, I'm living it now in my body. Life started rapidly changing. That's what I do. When I want to manifest something new, I ask myself, what would it feel like if I was living that existence right now? And I let myself feel it. I don't judge myself. I don't make me feel it all 24 hours of my day. I still live as a human. But I don't, and I do my best, I don't let the 3D tell me who I am. I tell it. Doesn't mean I don't have a moment where I'm in tears or I'm getting frustrated or triggered. Because I'm still a human, as we all are. But the whole point is you get to decide who you are on the inside. You get to decide that. That's what projects out is who you believe you are. You can do this. Kara, thank you very much. Hi, Kim. Can I still manifest SP if I feel we are incompatible? Like, not much to talk about with him. It feels awk. Thank you. Um, yes, you can. Um, I would be manifesting that, you know, SP and you have amazing conversations. You guys, you know, talk your balls off. You guys laugh with each other. You know, it's not awkward. We have tons to talk about. You got to start seeing yourself as... It probably sounds like I'm on motherfucking repeat, but see yourself as the version of yourself who, but, but really that's what it is. So you're the version of yourself that has a, a successful relationship with your specific person. You're compatible. But if you keep focusing on, we're not compatible, it's fucking awkward, we barely talk, that's going to be the experience. And that's how SP is forced to keep showing up how you keep describing them. See what I'm saying? So you want to start seeing them as fucking talkative. You have tons to talk about. Not that you're incompatible. We want to drop that story. Focus on the new version of you. Okay? 7 tentacles. Thank you very much. That's an interesting user. Kim, you're looking like a tropical vacation all winter. You are officially my new best friend. How to manifest money not through a job and be in the state of wealth. Some coaches say to focus on items, but I'd like a lump sum to jump start with. You do not have to focus on motherfucking items. That's stupid. I'm sorry, other coaches. I'm sorry. I think that's dumb. If you want a lump sum, you want a lump sum. I manifested a lump sum. But I will tell you, it took me a year because I couldn't fucking let go of the how. So my suggestion to you is don't worry about how it's going to come to you. Just put the focus on you having it. On you having it. Money's coming to you like water or flows to you like water. Money is the easiest thing for you to manifest. You know, you live a life of never having to worry about money. Right? You're so financially stable. You can buy whatever the fuck you want. Life is easy. Okay? Don't worry about how. Don't go logical. Our logical mind wants to say, you know, I have to have a job in order to have money. That's logical. We're in manifestation land. We are illogical. We're delusional over here. And that's okay. Okay? Don't focus on the how. 
That's my biggest tip because that was that's what took me so damn long. So I couldn't let go of the how. Is it? Oh gosh, I do not want to kill your name. I'm so sorry. Is it Pratt? I can't. I want to call you Pratt, and not in a in a in a mean way because I know Pratt is a shitty name, isn't it? Pratt, you're Pratt, but I don't mean it like that. But your name is long, and I don't want to butcher it. Okay. Hi Kim. I'm trying to manifest my dream in. There's a guy who's 90% what I want. What do I do to get the exact person? I keep thinking about this current guy when I visualize help. Okay, make your damn dream. Make Pratt's is my nickname. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. Make a damn dream man list. And, and affirm that you're in that relationship with that dream man now. Literally. Because listen, don't write the 90% man off. That 90% man might just be you've chosen the wrong version. There's a 100% version of him somewhere if you're like finding him sexy, sassy, saucy. Don't write him off because we've got 10% to work with. We can choose the version of him who's got the full package. So keep visualizing with him unless there's like something like you're like, Ew, no, that 10%, no, that's not going to fix it. Okay, fine. But if there's... Do I have to focus on the missing details? Well, it's more of you can. It's focusing as if he has them. Yes, you can do that. But I would suggest focusing on you as being the version of you that is having the full package version of him. So whatever that missing 10% is, it, it, that is not an issue with this new version of you, meaning you're already experiencing it. He's already that full version. What would it feel like if he showed up and he was 100% the full package? How would that feel? What would it feel like to be in that relationship? He doesn't have them. Age, race, occupation. He doesn't have them. Age, race, occupation. I don't get it. I'm not understanding. Age, race, occupation. But yet he's 90%, but you listed age and race and occupation? It doesn't sound like 10%. It sounds like that's the, the whole person. It sounds like you only like 10% of them. Oh, he's not the right age. Okay, so that's just, so what? We can change ages. I know that sounds woo-woo and outer limits, but you can. You can. There's a version that exists. Sounds fucked up, I know, but we can have timelines. Time is not an illusion. I mean, no, wait. Time's not linear. I'm getting tired. So I said time's not an illusion. I'm not. <laughs> that made no sense. Okay. Yes, anything's possible. Yes. All right. This is my last one. And my fucking ass is going to bed. Okay. I got early morning coaching calls. I also had to fucking make more cookies. And I'm starting to fucking mix my words because I'm getting tired. So I am a million dollar month mama BFF. Thank you very much. I sent a member message as well, but get something for poop since I wasn't able to get something before I sent the album. Merry Christmas. Love you. I love you. And I appreciate you. I appreciate your gift. You didn't have to send me anything else. I love you. OG, I love you. BFF, thank you so much. Merry fucking Christmas. What's this, Sarah Marue? Kim, I found the love of my life. I could not be happier for you. I could not be happier for you. Now you keep focusing on the version of yourself that has this loving, fulfilling relationship with this love of your life to maintain it, to keep it, because you can do it. You're living your best desired life because you're the best version of yourself right now. This is awesome. I'm very happy for you. Yes, and I am able to maintain it. And yes, you will. Yes, you fucking will. You can do it. I love you, Leanne Richer. Thank you so much. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you for coming here for our Christmas 
special live stream. I'll still be going live next Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking these out because I'm hurting. Okay. I love you all so much. I love that you put up with my sassy, sexy, saucy, snarky bullshit. I'm going to start acting and adding snarky to my sexy, sassy, saucy, and snarky. Because I like that word. Snark. Um, uh, thanks. Thanks so much for putting up with it. Because I love letting it out. <laughs> I do love you all. I'm a serious side. I fucking appreciate literally all of you. I appreciate the gifts. And I've received gifts all year. So it's not just the Christmas gifts. So I appreciate them all. I appreciate the super chats. I appreciate any dollar spent on me. It, I, I can't say it enough, but I, it, like I, I don't take it for granted in any way, shape or form. I mean it. It means the world to me. You've made my life. Oh, I, there aren't words. You've made my life so um, fulfilling. I feel like all of you are my friends, my little cubs, my HBICs that I feel very overprotective of. I love you all. I love our fucking community. I love that we're all sassy. We're going to get what we want. We're going to end 2022 with a bang. 2023 belongs to the HBICs. I mean that. The revision challenge is still happening. Don't give up. Things can change overnight. Don't give up. It's not too late. Christmas is Sunday. You got days. Get on it. Don't give up. I love you all. I'll see you all. Probably tomorrow. Okay? Be good. Thank you. Sexy, sassy, saucy, and snarky.